the undefeated Tigers, the undefeated Buckeyes. We hope you're ready. I know what, what this game's gonna look like playing in it last year. Dobbins, off to the races, touchdown, Ohio State. Ohio State showing some pressure. Sean Wade off the corner, and Lawrence is still down. Number 24 defense is charged with target. Sean Wade is out for the remainder of the game. Uh, that was just a big momentum turn. I just gotta be the toughest guy on the field. Lawrence had a lot of room in a foot race. Play. And the pass is complete and fumble, and the Buckeyes pick it up and they're scooping score. That's a possession and a fumble in my mind. The pass is ruled as incomplete. Yeah, and a massive exactly. overturn here. Dumps it over the middle. ETN in space. Touchdown, Tigers! Ohio State needing a touchdown. Field spires in the end zone. It's intercepted. And the Tigers are not going to be dethroned tonight. Our team has definitely been fueled from that, and we've kind of had that chip on our shoulder. It's the type of game you want in the semifinals. And the sequel, the most famous face, most impressive resume among all of his peers, Trevor Lawrence gunning for one more title shot, returns to New Orleans, scene of his lone career loss. The Tigers arrive loose, confident. Justin Fields and the six-win Buckeyes have been told, you don't belong here. After the strangest journey to the postseason ever, the underdogs are driven to rewrite the gut-wrenching ending from last year. Welcome to the college football playoff semifinal, the All-State Sugar Bowl from the Mercedes-Benz Superdome here in New Orleans, and the collision between the four-time defending Big Ten champion Ohio State Buckeyes and the six-time defending ACC champion Clemson Tigers. Alabama awaits. Will it be tied in the Tigers round five in the playoff or the first Buckeyes tied collision since Ohio State upset Alabama here six years ago? And welcome to New Orleans. I'm Chris Fowler. Buckeyes and Tigers familiar by now. They meet for the third time in the semifinals in the last five years. But the buildup is bizarre and unique and the backdrop very spicy because the Big Ten changed the rules, allowing Ohio State in the bracket with six wins, and Davo Sweeney was not having it. He is ranking Ohio State 11th in his coach's poll. So this one has become very personal. My partner, Kirk Herbstreit, joins from the home office in Nashville. Kirk, I'm glad you're feeling much better. I know you do your usual great job from there, and we'll see you for the championship game in Miami. But, man, is this feel a little bit different than last year's collision to you coming in? Well, you, you got Clemson coming into this game. It's almost as if this has become part of their regular season. They get into the postseason. It's every single year, it seems like, going back to 2015. And for Ohio State, that, that, I thought that tease really kind of set the tone for this game. They've been waiting, forget COVID, from when they walked off that field last year in Glendale, they've been waiting for another opportunity to go up against Dabo Sweeney and the Tigers, and they got it right in front of them. We'll see what happens in these next 60 minutes. Trevor Lawrence off a brilliant game in the ACC championship against Notre Dame. Back of the scene of his only career loss to LSU, of course, at the end of last season. Well, Trevor runs this offense so well in his third year. He's had so much success, wins a national championship in his freshman year, comes up with just a one loss last year in the championship against LSU. And now again, he's back in the playoff. And it's a balanced, explosive attack. We know about his arm. That's why he's going to be the first pick overall. But it's his legs that Ohio State needs to be most concerned about. So they're going to have to get their safeties down in close to the line of scrimmage. And when you do that, as you see here with Virginia Tech, you leave yourself one-on-one -on, -one on the outside against Cornell Powell and these wide receivers and Trevor Lawrence's arm. So that's a concern for Kerry Coombs, the Ohio State defensive coordinator, getting the numbers right. And do we leave your corners one-on-one? -on -one? And then playing in spades against Travis Etienne and Amari Rogers. Here's Etienne out of the backfield. Remember what he did to Ohio State. Not so much running the ball, but catching the ball. Can Ohio State do a good job of leveraging the ball and trying to keep everything in front of them and not giving up the explosive play that Clemson seems to do to a lot of people that they play, obviously? Regular play call for the Tigers. Tony Elliott not here. COVID protocol. Meanwhile, Kirk, Justin Fields, how will he respond to a game that was very subpar by his standards against Northwestern? 
Yeah, and I think that's the big thing for, for Justin Fields. I, I think anybody who's watched him play has a lot of confidence in what he can do. I've been told he's had laser focus week leading up to this game. And I think Ohio State will try everything they can to try to get his mojo going. Really, it starts with Trey Sermon in the running game. Sermon exploded over 300 yards, set a school record for yards in a game, beat Eddie George's record. And I think he's going to be a big factor to tonight. If you can run the ball, which is where it all starts with Ohio State, you can set up play action. You can set up some one-on-one -on -one opportunities of their own. And Chris Olave, who wasn't in Indianapolis in the Big Ten Championship, is back. He's kind of that security blanket for Justin Fields. And this, to me, is the X factor. Justin Fields' ability to run, create, whether it's design run or his ability to make plays off schedule, has to be tonight on point. Very similar to what he did a year ago, the ability to create. But guys taking the field as about touchdown underdogs. They do get Chris Olave, field security blanket back, but Master Teague, the running back, not available. He suffered a concussion against Northwestern. But guys in their hype video said, we know you think we don't belong. We know you don't give us a chance, aiming straight at their skeptics, Davo Sweeney included. 3,000 souls in the Superdome, far from the pandemonium of last year's championship game. There were 77,000 to watch LSU beat Clemson. Head to head, these two programs have achieved so much in their respective conferences. Six straight playoff appearances for Clemson. Ohio State's last two playoffs have been losses to the Tigers. That head to head, looming large, 4 0, is the all time series between these two. All four won by Clemson in the postseason. Hard to imagine a coach, Kirk. Looser and more relaxed seeming coming into this game than Davo Sweeney was in our meeting. Well, he definitely gave that off when we sat down and with him on the Zoom. He, he was uh, pretty laid back, and I think it's because he's used to bringing his team into this game. Uh, we'll, we'll see. I think Ohio State has a, a chip on their shoulder, and early part of this game, Chris, I think is going to be fascinating to see. Well, the early part of the game and last year's meeting was dominated by Ohio State, and not until Lawrence got hit in the head by Sean Wade on that targeting. Did the game turn around? And Clemson with the game-winning touchdown of the final couple of minutes. So many new faces on both sides tonight, but that man is familiar. Evan CTN back in his home state of Louisiana, hoping for the family's first win of the Superdome. Well, it was a bizarre season, of course. Clemson out of the gate quickly. They crushed Miami. They had a whole lap around the dirt track. The Buckeyes were still spinning their wheels, waiting to debut in late October. Tigers, of course, spun out, lost in South Bend. Ohio State had three games lost because of the COVID protocol, sliding across the finish line in Indy at 6-0. and oh. Five fewer games the Clemson Tigers played. How will that factor in tonight? There's lots of opinions on that. Joined by Tom Rinaldi and Maria Taylor, who's with Ryan Day. Thank you, Chris. Uh, Coach, you said that the playoff time is the time to finish the race. How does your team get off on the right foot to start this game? Well, it's going to take the, the whole 60 minutes. We know that. We want to start fast, but we also know it's going to you know, take these guys out. It's going to take everything we got for 60 minutes. So we'll take it one play at a time, regroup at halftime, and look to finish the race. All right. Thanks for your time, All Coach. Right, Chris? Ryan Day is saying his message to the team is pretty similar to last year's, Kirk. Make them feel our strength. Make them feel our violence. An aggressive approach he promises again tonight. Ohio State has a lot of confidence in, in the players on their, feet, on their team, and they feel very disrespected, and they want to challenge Clemson. It was an SEC officiating crew involved in controversy a year ago. The Big 12 in charge tonight. And David Alvarez now for the coin toss. Gentlemen, congratulations on your success in this unique and very challenging season. Welcome to the All-State Sugar Bowl and the college football playoff semifinal game. Ohio State, you're the visitors. You're going to be calling the toss. Here's the coin we'll be using. The All-State Sugar Bowl logo is heads. And the logo with both of the team's logos is tails. What is your call? Uh, the logos. The logos you called tails. It is tails, you've won the toss. Defer. Defer. Ohio State has won the toss, so we'll defer to the second half. You want the ball? Which end would you like to defend? Uh, I want to kick that way. Kick that way. Would you slide over there, please? Clemson will receive to start the first half. Have a great game. 
Well said by David Alvarez. The journey here is so challenging mentally and physically for all these guys involved, and now they get a reward. To Tom Rinaldi with Dabo Sweeney. Chris, thank you very much. Dabo, we've talked all week about Tony Elliott's absence as the primary play caller. What role will you have in calling the plays from down here on the field as you foresee it? Same role I've always had. The exact same. I always called a lot of them, worked, collaborated with Tony. Just be me and Street now. You say it's not who we play, it's how we play. How do you need to play best and earliest here, Dabo, for success? Well, again, we just need to be who we are and need to get off to a good start, take care of the football, and, and set the tone in the trenches. Good luck. Thank you. Brandon Streeter, he referred to. He moves upstairs to the booth. He's the quarterback coach. He's been involved in the game planning for years. But Tony Elliott, Kirk, such an outstanding, rhythmic, instinctive play caller. Dabo, as he said, will be very involved tonight. Yeah, Dabo will be involved, and, and he is always involved as a head coach and an offensive guy. But but Tony Elliott, you know, Jeff Scott was there for a long time alongside, and, and Tony Elliott has emerged as one of the top play callers in the country. And, and a, just as you say, great rhythm with Trevor Lawrence. It'll be interesting. I mean, Brandon Streeter, the quarterback coach, knows how to call plays. He's done it in his past at uh, Liberty and, and Richmond. But this is this is semifinal national championship game against Ohio State, and uh, it'll be fun to watch how that plays out throughout the game. Ohio State's offense will have to wait, and the defense will take the field against Trevor Lawrence. The Buckeyes have struggled defending the pass some this year, and we'll see if Lawrence company go right after that suspect secondary. Blake Hobiel to boot it away. He'll try to kick it high, usually to the left corner, and Travis Etienne in the really big games gets a chance his kickoff return back in his home state. The intensity undiminished despite the weirdness of just 3,000 in this world famous building. The tie to wait the winner. Here we go. Comes to Ohio State one more time in the semifinal. And ETN will have a chance from the four. Straight up the field and straight into the coverage team. Flying down the field to make the stop was Marcus Williamson. And here comes Trevor Lawrence, really picked up his play in that game last year when Wade hit him in the head. Then he had the big gallop for a touchdown and the game-winning touchdown pass to ETN in the final couple minutes. And he's been fueled by the loss here, out by Joe Burrow in last year's championship game. The first play is a pop pass to Amari Rogers, and he gets the corner stiff arm in the face of Warner. And a nice pickup on first down. Kirk, here's the Chick-fil-A impact players when the Tigers have the football. Well, they're going to try to get the ball to the outside, and they have the speed to do it. You just saw Amari Rogers, Travis Etienne. We talked about him in the open. They'll find different ways to get him the ball. Haskell Garrett, 92. Keep an eye on him. He has to be dominant in the inside. And then Sean Wade. You know, he's played in the past in that nickel spot, at that slot corner. Now he's playing out to the field. He'll have to be on, mark, on point tonight as well. There he is. And on the run, Etienne makes the catch, and it's quick first down. We'll see if the Tigers ratchet the tempo. You know, last couple plays, just the early part of this game, you're just feeling that Ohio State's going to have to be able to, to play, be able to play on the perimeter. Clemson, I think, feels, based on the film study, that they can get the ball to the outside with quick runs and quick passes out on the edge. Lawrence gets it out of the hands quickly. And on the run is ETN. Such a dangerous weapon as a receiver this season. And he's into Ohio State territory. Well, Galloway, the tight end, does almost a good job of screening Tuff Borland and, and prevents him from getting out into coverage. Again, this is a matchup that Ohio State's worked on 12 days. ETN out of the backfield, matched up against linebackers, made it tougher on Borland because he couldn't get out there and quit in time because of that screen. 26-yard game. Now, Lynn J. Dixon spelling ETN, takes the pitch, and is knocked out by seven banks. But again, a pretty decent chunk on first down. Got about five. Have you figured out how Clemson's going to attack Ohio State? I mean, we've seen four or five plays. They're all on the outside. They're all out on the edge, an area that Ohio State has had a tough time against most teams they've played this year in defending.
Lawrence Rogers in motion again. Lawrence thinks the pitch and is hit as he throws over the middle. That was Warner on the blitz. And it's third down. Well, this is a good job of getting pressure on him. They can't get it with the front four, so instead, off to the left, Pete Warner is able to get there just in time before he throws that football on a glance route to Cornell Powell. Warner timed that up perfectly to be able to get the pressure, and that's going to be a key tonight against Lawrence, is trying to make him uncomfortable in feeling that pressure from the front. ETN back in on third down. Buckeyes have been outstanding in this department, allowing only 34% this year. They bring pressure, and Lawrence off the back foot, lost it downfield, and the catch is made by Cornell Powell. Using that big frame, first and goal, Tigers. Uh, he, he's one-on-one -on -one against seven banks. He's in phase, really good coverage, does a good job adjusting back to the ball. Seven banks never really saw the ball, which allowed Powell with a slight push there, and then he comes back and makes a play on the football. Number Banks one. had Chris Banks had really good coverage. It's just with the ball under thrown to the outside, he just not able to adjust. ETN on the handoff, muscles down to the two. A big third down conversion for Trevor Lawrence and the Tigers to keep this drive alive. There's, a, there's the push, gets away with it. And I think that the, the fact that Banks never locates the football. It had a lot to do with why you didn't see a pass interference call there from from the offense of pushing off Banks one of the many first-year starters in this Buckeye defense big shoes to fill in the secondary on second and goal Lawrence keeps it tries to get the edge chased by Browning dive touchdown Tigers On the opening possession they march in 82 yards in eight plays to draw first blood the zone read with Trevor Lawrence. You see this a lot from this offense. You got to respect ETN in the middle. And then it's a foot race. Browning trying to get out there. Cooper trying to get out there. Amari Rogers with an outstanding block on Wade to allow it to free it up to the corner for Lawrence to be able to get in for that touchdown. Eighth rushing touchdown this season. The bigger the game, the more Trevor runs it. It's been a fixture in Clemson's offense in recent years. Championship phase means the QB is going to carry part of the rushing load. How about the AT&T 5G pylon cam getting the shot there early from Trevor Lawrence. BT Potter. The 59th BAT kicked by this prolific Clemson offense this season. All right, Justin Fields and Ohio State's offense must answer because Lawrence and the Tigers looking good early. Seven zip Clemson. The protection spotlight brought to you by Allstate, a flashback to last year's classic game. Yeah, th th this is the last play of the game. Chris Olave has been thinking about this since this night. He thought that he saw Justin Fields start to scramble. Instead, he throws the post, and Nolan Turner comes up with a big interception. That play has been an inspiration for Ohio State. Of course, Nolan Turner in the uh, ACC championship game had a targeting call in the second half, so he is out for the first half of this game. We'll be back at the start of the third quarter. One of the leaders of this defense, and especially in that secondary. Yeah, he's the leader in solo tackles and number two tackler. So Justin Fields and the Buckeyes will play from behind. Big contrast to last year's game when they just bolted out of the gate. Fields at one loss as a starter. Second best to Lawrence among active quarterbacks. The thumb was the issue against Northwestern. He has a little bit of a brace on that hand. We saw it on the pregame warmup. And there's the play Kirk just showed you that gut-wrenching interception to end the season. He threw two in that game, only had one all of last season. Really anxious to see how he starts. Wouldn't be surprised if Ryan Day doesn't go to even more tempo to just try to get him into a rhythm here early. And there is Trey Sermon, the hot hand, who broke Eddie George's 25-year-old single-game rushing record with 331 against the Wildcats. With the Clemson early with Brent Venables, expecting Sermon and even Fields to run. They are loaded up at the line of scrimmage. Brent Venable's one of the more active defensive coordinators as far as his scheme. Loves to give a lot of looks. Loves to challenge the offensive line and the communication as well as the quarterback. The sophomore Matthew Jones is in for the starting left guard Harry Miller who's not available tonight. See if that plays a role. 
Thurman's got it again, and he bolts up the middle. A quick burst to get within a couple of yards of the first down marker. Skalski and Xanders combined on the stop. And the Chick-fil-A yeah. impact players when Ohio State has the football. Skalski is one of them, Kirk. Yeah, and Trey Sermon, of course, 331 yards last week in a Big Ten championship. Olave is back. He missed that game. He, we talked about how important he is to Fields and his rhythm. Skowski is incredible, the leader of that front, the leader of the entire defense, the extension from Brent Venables. And Charleston steps in in that role of Nolan Turner. He's played a lot of ball. In fact, he's third in the team in tackles. They've played a lot of different people on the back end. 18 will be in for Turner here early. Ryan Day calling a timeout. He, of course, is the play caller. And we'll see what Ohio State decides to do on third and two. Quick timeout here. Seven Zip Tigers. The Allstate Sugar Bowl brought to you by Allstate. You've never been in better hands. Dos Equis, a most interesting beer. Please enjoy responsibly. And Samsung QLED TV. The official TV of ESPN College Football. The only shutout of an Urban Meyer coach team, 31-0 in the semifinal five years ago. Meyer, I'm told, is in the building tonight as a spectator. Chris Skalski, Kirk, you know, Ohio State called the timeout, but the Buckeyes should have maybe run a ball because the Tigers were confused here. We were talking at the break. I, I find this interesting. Only third play of the game, and, and Skalski, who, again, is, is in charge. He's clearly frustrated with uh, Specter and Jones not getting lined up right. Sermon Ohio State. Ohio State. Ohio First State. two plays here. Two tight ends, Farrell and Ruckert in the game. It's Fields running all the way, running into heavy traffic, and he stopped her. Ball came out. The ball was on the ground. Skalski and Spectre combining, and it's a three and out for Ohio State. Really good job by the linebackers. Skalski, Spectre. Watch Spectre work around the block by Ruckert, and then puts his head right on the football. Football is out, but Jeremy Ruckert sees it, and, and he missed the block, but he's able to get down and get that football before Skalski can get to it. Yeah, bad news is he missed the block, and they're excellent blocking tight ends, but yeah. at least he prevented the turnover. Well, both those linebackers showing instincts on that play and quickness getting around those blocks. So the aggressive running game that they promised not effective in the opening possession. Drew Chrisman drives the punt, and it'll take a nice bounce, and can they stop it? No signal yet. They're going to confer on the goal line to see if it crossed, and it is going to be ruled a touchback. So just unable to down the ball. Tigers' first possession. Yeah, you go back to what they did, and we, we expected this coming in, that they would try to attack the perimeter, where Ohio State has had some concerns all year defensively with this speed. Amari Rogers, look at ETN going up against a linebacker, get him one-on-one -on -one against Tough Borland, and it's a big third-down conversion. Nice job by Cornell Powell coming back to the football, and then the speed. The speed of, of Trevor Lawrence being able to come off that zone read and outrun Baron Browning and Jonathan Cooper to the corner and get that first touchdown for the Tigers. Of course, the battle in the trenches is important here, but who can win on the edge? And it was Powell winning on the edge in the first possession. There's another look as the ball did cross the plane. at and 5G pylon can. It's a look good look. The way it bounced, I thought it was going to check up. And they were going to be able to pin Lawrence very deep, but the Tigers take over at the 20. The lobby just unable to make that play. Remember, early going for Clemson. Most of these plays scripted. And then eventually you'll see Brandon Streeter start calling these plays off that script. Etienne runs into a wall. Tommy Togiai, Jonathan Cooper combining. Yeah, and Togiai and, and Haskell Garrett and Cooper, if there's a strength of the Ohio State defense, remember, we've only seen this team play six games, and I think people talk about that's an advantage for them. I disagree. It's a disadvantage as far as developing continuity and depth on this side of the ball. But if there is a strength, it's up front. Throw back to the near side. It was high over the head of Powell. Rare misfire from Lawrence. And third and eight Coom coming up. Yeah, Kerry Coombs bringing some pressure. We've seen that a few times. This time he brought tough Borland and also the free safety, Josh Proctor, to try to dial up pressure. They didn't necessarily get to Lawrence, but the, the, the tighter coverage affected him in throwing a, the inaccurate throw out there to Cornell Powell. ETN motions back in. Rogers is to the right, and Powell on banks. 
on the left side, single coverage. That was the matchup Lawrence looked to last time on third down. Plenty of time, launches downfield, and he had the tight end, Davis Allen, wide open. He'd slipped behind coverage there, but overthrown. Fourth down. Uh, he, he was lost here all over it, Chris. He's lost in coverage. Watch Proctor way in the back near the 50-yard line. He kind of gets lost. His eyes start to look up instead of looking back, and that's what Trevor Lawrence saw. He tried to go behind 41 Proctor, who was out of position. Good job of protection and giving Trevor Lawrence enough time to eventually find Allen and just unable to connect. Werner got there just in time to influence the throw by the quarterback. Garrett Wilson from the 21 dances around and flags come in as he is stopped at the 33 yard line. So Ohio State's defense settles down and quickly gets the football back to fields. Wondering if we'd see Sean Wade Kirk move back on Rodgers in the return, slot. Return, illegal block in the back, receiving team number 13, 10 yard penalty, first down, Ohio State. Time out. Johnson with the penalty, and that will spoil the field position. But uh, an intriguing matchup if Wade does end up guarding Rodgers. We'll keep an eye on that tonight. Cartersville, Georgia, about 20 miles away from Justin Fields, hometown of Kennesaw. Top two recruits in the 2018 class. Justin took kind of a winding road to Columbus. Trevor committed very early to Clemson. Top two quarterbacks winning percentage active. And Lawrence, clearly the top rated prospect in the draft. Some debate about whether Fields is the number two quarterback at this point. But yeah, Trevor might need to get used to the teal jerseys of the Jaguars in his future. <laughs> Ohio State, that first possession, powering their way against that Clemson defense, came up and they went three and out. Let's see what they do in this second possession. Fields looking to throw for the first time, launches across the middle, and there is Olavi, the reliable target that makes the catch first down to the 34. Really good sign for Ohio State fans. This is such a different throw for Justin Fields, working through his progressions. You know, last week against Northwestern, had a tendency to lock in on his primary and hold and hold and hold and eventually get trouble. That time he worked through two or even three receivers until he eventually came back to Alave on that throw. Alave tapped in the shoulder two days before that game and Indian told, you're out. He had 18 catches in the two previous games. He was hot. Try to bring pressure on Fields, looking to throw on first down, checks it down to Sermon, who's got space, and a first down, and is still running, hurling men out of bounds inside the Clemson 35. That's his biggest play as a receiver all season. Well, he sneaks out of the backfield, and he checks it down. Nobody picks Sermon up. They brought Skowski on a blitz. Nice job by the offensive line picking him up, and now you got Trey Sermon out in space, much like we Whoop. talk about Travis Etienne. <laughs> Nice. He did that. He did that in a Big Ten championship game. He got, he's got elevation. He tried it the first time and got tackled. The second time he just took it up a notch and got right over the defender. You're right. Now he's got the ball again. Running left. Serve it in the clear. Foot race. Touchdown, Ohio State. Buckeyes answer quickly. And Servant still has the hot hand. How about the left side? of the offensive line by Ohio State. Left tackle Thayer Munford. Matthew Jones is a left guard, 55. Clemson struggling to get lined up. Ohio State goes fast after the last play. Nobody there. The alley opens up on that stretch play. You can see Clemson not in position, unlike them, not getting lined up. That cat and mouse game between Venables waiting to get the call in right. And, and Ryan Day saying, we're going to challenge them with different ways to get the play in. That time, caught Clemson napping out of position and was able to crease them for a touchdown. Such a quiet start to the season for Trey Sermon, the grad transfer from Oklahoma. He has exploded in the last couple of games. The Buckeyes get even midway first quarter. Clemson Kirk caught off guard in that touchdown run by Sermon. 
And you can see Fields is reacting to Ryan Day. Go, go, go now, go now. And they got him out of position, looking over for the signal. Yet almost eight orange jerseys on the right side of the Ohio State offense is what Ryan Day clearly got a signal in. Let's go now. And remember, with the media, there was a lot of talk between Ryan Day. What do you think about how Clemson seems to be in the right call? He was alluding to certain things about signals and, and, and uh, Brent Venables maybe waiting to the last second to get the call in. That time it backfires on Clemson. Yeah, Brent likes to have the last word, likes to have the chess piece in his hand just before the snap. But that's shades of what we saw, Kirk, last year early in the game when the Tigers were kind of caught on the back foot quite often defensively. Yeah, yeah, I mean, and, and they'll they'll adjust to that. I, I disagree with Brent Venables is, is waiting to steal signs. I think if you talk to him about it, he'll, he'll tell you he's waiting to make sure that you're not getting a look as to what he's doing. Who knows what the deal is? All I know is in that particular uh, play, Ryan Day no noticed something, got the call in to Justin Fields and went fast, got Clemson out of position while they were still looking over for the call and did exactly what they needed to do. You're a fan of speed chess. This is your kind of game tonight. So the Tigers back to work. Lawrence keeps it, flips it in the flat to Braden Galloway, and the tight end is knocked down on the far side, but it's a first down, not near the 40. And they brought him from the, the back side, almost showing that split zone like he's going to block. You see this all over college and pro football. Very tough to pick up where they're able to sneak him out into the, into the flat with a quarterback the side he's rolling, and the time the defense just lost Galloway for a big game. Tight end's a big part of the offense this year for Clemson. Didn't have a single touchdown catch last year. Lawrence finds time in the pocket and delivers a strike to Rodgers, who takes a big hit from Werner. He gets up slowly, but it's a first down inside the 45. I love his presence here in the pocket. He feels his pressure coming off to the left with a Hilliard blitz, just kind of moves to the right. And, and you know, I, I think Amari Rodgers has had as good a year of, of about any receiver outside of Devontae Smith in the country. Such a reliable receiver for Trevor Lawrence in this system. Within 10 yards now, with 1,000 receiving yards on the season. ETN takes the pitch on the edge, spins back, but is swarmed. That touchdown run has given the Ohio State sideline some serious life now. Borland on the tackle. Borland makes the play, but gives Sean Wade a lot of credit, along with Pete Warner, for getting outside. That's what they want to do. Set the edges against Travis Etienne and how elusive he can be. Force him back to the inside where you have linebackers and safeties that are scraping. That time they brought him right back to tough Borland. Etienne just six yards in his first three carries. Of course, had the big reception in the touchdown drive. Play action, they flip it to him again. And wide open is Travis Etienne. And it's another first down before Warner can stop him down inside the 30. Yeah, Ohio State knows that this is a concern. I like the eye candy. You bring Amari Rodgers, you fake it to him, freezes the backers, they get lost, ETN sneaks out, nobody picks him up. So that had everything to do with the play call, everything to do with the design there. It's not just getting the ball out to ETN because of his talent. It's using Amari Rodgers as a decoy baiting the defense and then getting the ball back to the outside. Play action throw again, rifle far side. Frank Ladson, who's just returning to help now, makes the catch and they are in rhythm again, this Tiger offense, another first Films, down. Film study shows that Sean Wade likes to bail. He doesn't press off him, but when he does, typically he's bailing and getting, giving you soft coverage. And I think Clemson has seen a lot of that on film in the six games that Ohio State has played, and they feel that they can get underneath a Sean Wade anytime they need to. Check it. They spotted about a half yard short. So on second down, it's Dixon breaking a tackle, lowering the shoulder and banging for a first and goal down inside the five. The junior from Butler, Georgia. Good compliment to ETN. Yeah, really good block by Cade Stewart, the center, 62. Does a nice job of opening up, and then you can see that Dixon's got some physicality in, in his own right. You think about ETN and how physical he can be, but Dixon also does a nice job of bouncing off of some would-be tacklers and getting that ball down deep in Ohio State ter territory inside the five. ETN back in after Dixon sets him up first and goal. And just waltzes in. Travis Etienne finds the end zone, and the Tigers are back on top. Back and forth in the first quarter. A really good drive there for Clemson. The tempo giving Ohio State some fits mixed up. We talked about Brandon Streeter and the job he could do as a play caller. 
the offensive staff led by Streeter tonight. Do a nice job here on this possession. Seven plays, 75 yards, under three minutes, attacking, very aggressive. That was a message from Dabo Sweeney after what Ohio State did to Clemson last year. They wanted to come out fast and assert themselves and send a message. And they've done that here early. Yeah, good run pass mix on their possession so far. Another look at the touchdown. This was pretty easy for Travis. Yeah, right side of the offensive line. If they can win up front against this Ohio State defensive line, it'll make it very, very tough for the linebackers in the secondary to defend this offense. They've got to win up front at the point of attack and give Clemson the credit. That time, the offensive line with the mixed, uh, mixed play calling, they won that drive. Travis was the last member of the recruiting class in 2017, a tiny town of Jennings, Louisiana. Monster skills in high school here, but the ETN family's had a tough time in this building. As his younger brother is Trevor, he lost the state championship game in the Superdome a year ago. Travis once lost a high school championship game. Of course, a couple losses in the CFP. He would like to get the ETN family on the board in this famous building in their home state tonight. <laughs> Well, what a big, a big opportunity for him in this game. And another milestone, another record. Shocked a lot of people by coming back for this senior season. BT Potter rarely allows kickoffs to be returned, and it's a touchback. Next weekend, the NFL's Super Wild Card Weekend. Triple headers both days. The mega cast coverage at ESPN, ABC, Deportes, and more. Matchup day and time of our Wild Card game will be determined after this week 17 game. So stay tuned for that. The Superdome, groundbreaking, began here 50 years ago, back in 1971, if you can believe that. The scene of eight Super Bowls over the years and so many Final Fours and National Championship games in college football. Buckeyes once again take over down seven. Fields keeps it and Knights quickly diving forward for a first down. You better be aware of, of Justin Fields in the run game. You know, we've talked all week about what Trevor Lawrence can do. Watch the reads to the end. The end collapses. And you better have somebody to be able to account for Justin Fields. He is a big man at 6'3", about 225 pounds, and he is fast. He is, you know, last week they went up against Ian Book in the ACC championship. Completely different set of, ch of challenges tonight against Justin Fields. Remember, when they played Fields last year, he had a knee brace on that left knee. He's healthy now with his legs. He only had 13 rushing yards in that game. There's Sermon powering to the left. This is what Day had in mind. Pick up eight on first time before Thornton stopped him. Got to be really impressed with what Ohio State's doing up front. You know, the, the first series, it was just three kind of power runs. Clemson got him off the field. In the second series, they came back, opened it up, tried to attack a little bit more, throwing the ball. But they're, at the end of the day, they want to be able to win the line of scrimmage and run the football with Trey Sermon and Justin Fields. Make you respect that. See Josh Myers, Wyatt Davis, part of that interior line. Fields from the pocket, launches downfield, and a diving catch is made. Garrett Wilson got deep and hauled it in. A beautiful adjustment midair. Buckeyes at first and goal. Well, Garrett Wilson can do this. He can get downfield. He has such tremendous ball skills. He against Kendrick one-on-one. -on -one. He gets behind him. Great job off of the play action. Move the safety to the middle. Creates the one-on-one -on -one opportunity. And how about the accuracy and the adjustment? Fields puts it up in the air. Allows Wilson to adjust outside to the ball. Perfectly executed by Ohio State. It's been a very accurate deep ball thrower this year, but that from Wilson was difficult and he made it look easy. On first and goal, Sermon is wrapped up, hit immediately and dropped by the fine true freshman Miles Murphy. Uh, he misread this one, may have predetermined it, maybe didn't have a good handle of the ball, but I, I thought he would have pulled this down. Murphy comes down, that's his read, pull that if he takes the back and now you got a chance to run. You got to run the ball there. That is a, a misread, one of the few mistakes we've seen early here by Justin Fields. Tigers defense typically tough to score and in the red zone, but this was a major factor in last year's game and Ohio State moved the ball all over the place had to settle for three red zone field goal attempts Second and goal back from the 10 they shift the tight ends to the right and now a flag It's a false start. It'll back them up to the 15 now The last thing you need against the Venables defense false down start. here offense number 55 five-yard penalty 
still second half. That's Matthew Jones who's in for the starter Harry Miller tonight. You know they're mixing up their tempo trying to affect the, the rhythm of Brent Venables and when you do that sometimes you get you get a little bit of confusion. They were just shifting the two tight ends and you can see up front. That's what Clemson pointed the offensive lineman a little bit mixed a uh, middle little miscommunication up front. And just a slight walking back but that's enough to draw the flag. On second and goal, Fields scans, pump fakes, and just takes off. Fields makes the cut, slides down. He started the slide at the seven. That's where they'll spot him. It'll be third and goal. What an incredible job by Clemson recognizing screen, and a better job by Justin Fields not only not throwing it. You know, most quarterbacks throw this away. Watch the D-line feel this. They sensed it right away. Tyler Davis is on it. Fields, instead of throwing up, throwing uh, the ball away and giving up on it, he said, I'll take those linemen. I'm not going to give it to Trey Sermon. I'll take them myself and get those positive yards. Third and goal now. Fields in the pocket, fires to the end zone, into traffic, caught for a touchdown by Luke Farrell. Didn't have a catch the last three games, first touchdown of the season, and a touchdown in a tight window as he beat Kendrick, their best corner. Chris, I thought he was going to go to Jeremy Ruckert, who worked to the middle of the field. It would have been an easier touchdown, but instead he goes to his his the other tight end, Luke Farrell at 6'6. He was matched up against Kendrick, who's about 5'11. So he, he takes a favorable matchup, but a tight window when he had a wide open Jeremy Rucker in the uh, the middle of the field. Farrell is a tremendous blocker. That's how he usually provides value to the offense. Only his fourth catch this season. It's yeah, the, both tight both tight ends, Chris, are off to the left. And you know what watched him work. I wish I could draw there with you, but you have to watch 89 who works to the outside. Look at 88 right in the middle wide open if he throws it, but instead he goes to the outside and gets the ball to the big guy Farrell again 6'6 six, six, matched up against about 5'11 a corner. That's probably why nice little push back to the inside almost like you're just rebounding a basketball, but the big man comes down with a catch and the Buckeyes tie it up. I was going to say that's like a power forward kind of boxing out a two guard. <laughs> yeah. And that ball was thrown precisely. Kendrick swiped at it, just missed breaking it up. And Ohio State on a third and goal gets seven, not settling for three. Crucial. Well, Justin Fields, everybody wondered, would he be in sync? Would he be back to being the Justin Fields that everybody has watched? You know, everybody's kind of expected him to be. Indianapolis didn't go well, had a couple interceptions. He was 12 of 27, 114 yards, looked out of rhythm. Looks like Justin Fields that you all kind of come to expect to see run the Ohio State offense early in this game. He is in his rhythm and groove, feeling good. Yeah, he starts four for four. Kickoff went out of bounds, so Clemson will start from the 35. Aerial coverage on this nice evening in New Orleans, provided by Goodyear. Keep driving from the first kickoff to the final whistle. Goodyear, more driven. It's a rare miscue. The Ohio State kickoff team, and it sets up Lawrence. At the 35. How you liking this first quarter so far, folks? 14 <laughs> apiece. <laughs> Pretty good. Yeah. Well, that last drive. That, remember the, the screen that Clemson picked up and he stayed alive. And there was a lot of plays on that last drive. ETN got caught up in traffic, eluded one tackle, but Warner, who's been active so far, dropped him at the line of scrimmage. Ohio State's going to have to do a better job of getting to the edge, getting to the outside, not letting ETN, not letting Amari Rogers have all that space. Good job of getting off of blocks and being able to keep him uh, very, very close to the line of scrimmage. Warner, the senior, the top tackler on this Chris defense. Hood. They're the corners up tight there. Lawrence keeps the football. Big fella weaving through traffic, and Warner again right there to meet him after a two yard gain. And it'll be third and long. It's risky to bring your corners up, but it eliminates space and it, and it takes away the easy access plays to the outside and it forces them back to the inside where you've got a lot of guys with a chance to get off of blocks like Pete Warner did right there. Now a chance for Ohio State's defense to get off the field. Final minute of a frenzy back and forth first quarter here in the Superdome. Buckeyes bring some pressure. Lawrence steps up and delivers a sideline strike caught but short of the first down is Powell in front of Wade. So a fourth and two for Sweeney to think about in his own again. They're great. 
That time Sean Wade, remember I talked about how he bails and he doesn't necessarily press and stay on you. That time, a better job of recognizing the down and distance. Third down and about eight. Look at Sean Wade at the top. Instead of losing ground and making it easy for Powell, he pushes him and works and tries to keep him short of that first down marker. Powell needs to get beyond that line and instead, Sean Wade wins that battle. So it's a three and out. And to begin the second quarter, Tied at 14. What a start in the second semifinal of the college football playoff. Set for the second quarter. College football playoff semifinal of the All-State Sugar Bowl. Pretty even first quarter, 167 offense for Clemson, 165 for Ohio State. Tigers to punt it away to Garrett Wilson. Clemson had problems earlier this year. Had a couple of punts blocked, had three field goals blocked, but they've cleaned up that part of the special team. Smooth sailing since the first few games. Spires rolls out, boots it low on the hop. Wilson tries to make a cut, can't. And they'll drop him down at the 16-yard line. Bowls continue tomorrow at 4 Eastern on ESPN. Oregon, champions of that bizarre Pac-12 season against number 10 Iowa State PlayStation Fiesta Bowl. Intriguing matchup. And then Texas A&M. Aggies fans feel that they belong in this playoff over Ohio State. Chance to play the Tar Heels, who are without so many of their key players. Capital One Orange Bowl from Hard Rock. Ohio State's so far a very balanced attack. You see the first drive, they were off three and out. Since then, doing a nice job of mixing things up with Ryan Day. He has a quarterback that's feeling it, seeing the field, making good decisions early in this game for Ohio State. Looking to fire far side, long throw, and Olave darts for a quick first down. Xander stopped him. You know, I don't know if Ohio State's wide receivers get enough credit on a national level. You know, you, you, often you talk about some of the other receivers, but Garrett Wilson and Chris Olave both bring something a little bit different to the table. Olave didn't play against Northwestern, and I think it affected the rhythm and the continuity of what Justin Fields and Ohio State likes to do. I know you and I had a chance to talk with him on a Zoom. Very introspective, deep thinker, Chris Olave. Really impressed with him, and I know he's been holding this loss from a year ago inside. It's very painful for him, memory. It was a first down catch by Wilson. He was so emotional about having to miss that Big Ten championship game. He said he never felt better in practice. Got tapped on the shoulder, had to sit out, and then watch his quarterback struggle. His, his route running just continues to get better. His competitive edge, he's dangerous in the seams. Yards after the catch, he can get downfield. He can do so many different things in this offense. Fields six for six, showing no ill effects of that thumb, which is wrapped after he put it out of bounds against Northwestern last week. And this is Sermon barreling up the middle for another first down before Charleston stopped him. You know, Brent Venables, he is, he's, he's slanting his defensive line. Watch, watch Fields. He wants to keep it, and he gives it. He's like, there's no one there. Either you take it or I take it. Someone's going to get some positive yards because Clemson, they happen to slant and angle the wrong way, trying to guess which way Ohio State might be trying to go with that zone read game, and it backfires that time. Sermon continues to run with that edge, that anger that he was known for early in his career at Oklahoma. Field looking to launch downfield. He's it for Olave just over his hands. He had his man beat inside the five. Keep in mind, Nolan Turner, the quarterback of that secondary, is not back there. There's some, some miscommunication right now. He is wide open. The man who's in their form is 18, Charleston. Ohio State has just a, a, a kind of an over-under. you got a tight end underneath, and you got a Olave going behind him. Nobody picks him up, and with his speed, he goes right by that defense. And that time, Fields just not quite enough air underneath that one. Fields, with some confusion at the snap. No flag down. He darts forward. Yeah, Brent Venables does not want to see Tyler Venables his younger son on a lobby very often tonight. That is not a good recipe for the Clemson secondary. Well, and in really for, for Venables, he needed Charleston, who was underneath, to be able to get back and help him out on that play. And Clemson caught a break there. And the confusion there, Chris, was Ohio State had a, had, a, had a freeze call on. It looked like Clemson may have jumped, but 
not able to completely pull them off so it sets up a third and four. Yeah the first incompletion tonight for Fields was crucial. Let's see if it costs Ohio State they need four. Tigers crowding the line and they pull back. Fields has time over the middle catch made first down. Jackson Smith and Jigba the freshman moves the sticks for the Buckeyes a zone blitz where they drop the defensive end from the right into the middle of the field They bring pressure from the left, but it's picked up nicely by Ohio State And he's able to make that throw over the middle of the field where nobody is there I'll tell you Smith and Jigba has Tremendous instincts for a true freshman. We saw what he could do earlier this year when he had a nice touchdown early in the season Another man who matched the Northwestern game. Kind of a quiet season for a five star. Fields fakes out the defense and rolls and has some yardage and still running. Knifing through defenders, lowers the shoulder. It's a first down inside the red zone. Farrell on a nice block. You know, if you're going to cover everybody downfield, you better be careful because Fields is not just going to run out of bounds. Ruckert 88 does a nice job picking up a block. You also see that again the freshman Smith and Jigma he picks up a block and then there's the natural running ability of Justin Fields He's going down that sideline trying to dial somebody up. Look at the blocks downfield Smith and Jigma does a nice job That's what gave him the alley down that right sideline Fields was not running out of bounds there You saw him stay in lower the shoulder He's got two tough guys playing quarterback tonight and Sermon off the right side picks up about three in this Ohio State Ground game already churned out 104 yards. You know, Chris, you talked about, uh, you know, you showed a graphic earlier that showed Trevor Lawrence maybe in a Jacksonville uniform and maybe Justin Fields in a Jets uniform. I, I really feel that Justin Fields is taking this game on personally. He did, taking this game personally against Trevor Lawrence. They lost to him last year. He didn't have a great game in the Big Ten Championship. All the talk about Trevor Lawrence. I think he's really in, in, within himself trying to play not just well, but out duel Trevor Lawrence tonight to show people how good he is. Got to be careful with that mindset, though, don't Drops back, has a man wide open, it's Rucker. Two touchdowns for the Buckeyes tight ends tonight. They've been quiet for the second half of the season, but not tonight. Chris, he's off to the left and just and with all the action going left, look at the tight end off to the left. He's just going to hide. He's waiting with the action, roll, see how he just kind of hides, waits for everybody to move over. Nobody picks him up. He just kind of waited, waited patiently. Action rolled left to of the offense. He sneaks out to the right. Linebackers never saw him. And Justin Fields patiently waited to make that throw for another touchdown, his second of the night. Nice play design by Ryan Day. Kind of figured maybe the tight ends might reappear tonight. They have in a big way. Buckeyes on top. What a start for Justin Fields. It was so disappointed the way he played against the Western. He didn't even have to watch the tape of that game. He admitted that the Heisman hype, they were giving him the trophy after three games, kind of messed with his head. And then the doubters and the skeptics and have to tune all that static out. He arrived at this game, determined, as you said, Kirk, I think he does take the matchup with his fellow Georgian yeah. personally. Oh, yeah. It's a good start. ETN feels it at the five. Makes a cut, Travis Etienne. You just hold your breath whenever he gets the football. Finally knocked down across the 30. He's slow to get up, so we'll keep an eye on that. Maria? Well, Chris, you mentioned Justin Fields wouldn't watch game film of the Big Ten Championship, but he said he watched last year's matchup against Clemson nearly a hundred times and he said he always had a sick feeling in his stomach but the one thing that he learned is that he was being too much of a perfectionist and that Ryan Day told him that he needs to step back and not have such a big impact on whether or not he's playing the way he believes he's supposed to he's having more fun on the sidelines I've already seen it talking to his wide receivers smiling and having a lot of conversation so far he's only played a season and a half of college football remember Lawrence has played three years and uh Deep breaths now from the Clemson faithful. ETM was on the carpet for a while, but is up and appears to be okay. We'll take a break. Tigers get the football back. Down by seven. The All-State Sugar Bowl, brought to you by AT&T 5G. Taco Bell's Nacho Fries. And Ford. We're all in this together. Let's finish strong. Quarterback's best friend. It's been a big year for dogs in the quarantine. And both these quarterbacks in love with their dogs. You saw Trevor wearing 
number 16, Peyton Manning jersey. Of course, that's the guy that he idolized because of Peyton's well-known skills for mental preparation. Growing up in Knoxville, Etienne on the sidelines to start this drive. Sign me up for the dogs too, Chris. <laughs> I'm so envious. You got, what, you got three of them there? <laughs> three, uh, three golden. They're, they're hanging out here. Are they enjoying the game so far? Yeah, they are. One's asleep. Ben's asleep on the couch. <laughs> How could he be asleep? What a, what, what a start here. Five touchdowns already. And now it's the Tigers' turn to answer, playing from behind for the first time tonight. They fake the pitch to Dixon and pitch it long downfield. And not turning around and reacting. With EJ Williams, who was well covered by Sean Wade. And they're challenging Sean Wade downfield. EJ Williams, a true freshman, 6'3, 190, has is, is really emerged with some of the injuries to Frank Ladson, Joe Ngata. They haven't had the, a chance to get some of their better receivers, and EJ Williams is talented. That time, very good coverage by Sean Wade downfield. Wade, a consensus All American this season. Pitch it in the far side. Again, this is Rodgers, and he's knocked down. Let's go to Tom on the Clemson sideline. Chris, we've talked all along about how important Travis Etienne would be, and he's not in there right now. From the opening series, you see him just come back into the backfield. They have been working on stretching him out. He's been taking more Gatorade and hydrated drinks, cramping certainly, but something to keep an eye on. He obviously was down after he returned that kick for a period of time. Not very warm in here at all, Chris, as we discussed. Keep an eye on cramping for ETN. And nerves can create cramping, of course. Tigers need four on third down. ETN, the receiver there, but that was an inaccurate throw. It was behind him. Wade was right in his face anyway. And the Buckeyes defense forces another punt. Now remember, they've gone to that play in the past against man-to-man. -man. Ohio State's not in man-to-man. -man. This play is designed for man-to-man. -man. A wheel out of the backfield to ETN, but the corner's sitting out there waiting for it. So typically, and you can see ETN looking to the inside to 21 Williamson because he thought he could beat him, but they did not expect to see Sean Wade also sitting out there. So good mix up by Gary Coombs. Ohio State defense getting its footing after the first two Tiger touchdowns. Wilson steps up, makes the fair catch at the 25 yard line. Well, the Ohio State offense mixing up their tempos and it's affecting Clemson getting lined up. To the credit of Ryan Day, this is a big part of their plan to try to catch Clemson off guard. And if they're looking over for a signal, let's try to take advantage of it. Here's a look at how Clemson's adjusting to a simple uh, formation where you have a receiver moving from one side to the other. They bust on a coverage of the tight end. That time, Jeremy Ruckert, the second tight end to score. Ryan Day has got to feel good, not just about his quarterback, Justin Fields, who's 8-9, and nine, but the plan and the way they're going after this Clemson defense. The only incompletion was when he missed Olave open deep. It's Wilson motioning back to the left side. Fields rolls to his right, flips in the flat, and again, it's the tight end Farrell. It's a short gain. I'll tell you, uh, James Skowski there, he's trying to, just a, again, a simple formation where you have, you have a, a, a receiver and Garrett Wilson going in motion. Look at look at Skowski. He's trying to make sure everybody's on the same page, but they're lost right now. Defensively, they are not. Typically, they're the aggressor. They're the ones kind of setting the tone, but right now it's Ohio State, and Clemson is reacting to what Ryan Day and the Ohio State offense is doing. You don't see Clemson's defense like this very often. Play action on second down. Long throw. Olave's got the catch, and he's got a first down. Kirk, anything to do with Nolan Turner, the secondary yeah. like not being in there in this first half. Well, in the back end, for sure. I mean, and again, that's a bit. We talked earlier in the game about how big that that is, uh, you know, having a quarterback, a veteran lost from that secondary. But I also just think it's the defense just right now being out of sorts. And, and you got to give Ryan Day and Fields and the Ohio State offense uh, a lot of credit coming into this game, trying to mix it up. There's easy access and Jamison Williams comes back, makes a hands catch. And they pick up a, a nice first down gain. About Boy, six. It, it, it really helps Ryan Day when he can look in the eyes of Justin Fields and know that he's got his guy back. You know, over the last couple games, he, you know, he's, I think he's thrown five interceptions in the last three games. If you go back to the Indiana game, it's a guy that, that threw three interceptions in his first 17 games. And you look at him right now, you look in his eyes, and you're Ryan Day, you're feeling really good about the execution and what you're asking him to do. 
And bursting to the middle is Sermon, rumbling into the secondary, breaking tackles, stiff arm, and is finally corralled down near the 25 by Xanders, but Sermon continues where he left off at Indy. Watch Luke Farrell from the right work back to the left. Boom, that block right there allows him to get underneath in that inside zone play. This is the part of Trey Sermon that people underestimate. That stiff arm, how live that is. He does not go down easy. Much linear than some of the backs that Ohio State has had in the past. 6'1", 215 pounds. And to see where he was early in the year and to see where he is now, it's like watching a different running back in this Ohio State offense. No doubt. And Charleston, who's in for Turner, missed that tackle. Those who know Sermon well wondered what was up early in the season. He wasn't running with the same edge, the same anger, the same aggression, thinking too much, too robotic, they thought, Kirk. He has found the form, though, lately. You know, he tore an LCL last year in November at OU. Took three to four months to rehab. He went back to Houston, Rashad Whitfield, who's in Houston, his skills and footwork trainer, worked with him. And he really didn't get on the Ohio State campus until June. So I think it's just a matter of just everything kind of working for him, getting used to a new offense, and then he took off. There's Tyler Davis down, the big inside defensive tackle. Yeah, he's missed five games this season with a leg injury. He's holding his left ankle. We'll step aside as the athletic trainers check that out. That situation happening to us uh, really drove us in the uh, offseason, and you know we, we kind of had fuel from that. So I think um, our team has definitely been fueled from that, and you know we've we've kind of had that chip on our shoulder this whole offseason. That's the final score. Reminder on the monitor in the weight room: they won the stats, but they lost opportunities in the red zone. Too many field goals, some damaging penalties on defense, aiding Clemson touchdown drives. Very determined start for Ohio State. Sermon's got it, but he's got nowhere to run. Immediately met by Brian Brissy, that stout true freshman inside. You know, that time with, with, with Trey Sermon aligned to the right of Justin Fields, Clemson shifts their defensive line. They kind of slant away from him right into position to be able to make that play in the backfield. Ohio State's offensive line just didn't have a chance. That time, Brent Venables, we talked about how he guessed wrong. This time, he guesses right the way he slants that defensive line. For C, that big 300-pound wrecking ball in the middle. What a freshman season he's had. Here they come. Oh, dropped out. Third and 13. Fields does have time. And now takes off. Makes a cut. Takes a hard hit by Skalski, who knocks him down. Two yards short, and Fields is still down. Uh, he took that shot right in the ribs on the right side of his right in between the, the it looked like the rib cage and maybe the back part of his ribs again a, a big a big quarterback that can do a lot of damage to a lot of teams when he runs but 47 a physical tackler hits him short of that first down and lowers the boom there Skalski plays with a memory of his dad who told him when he was a young player Son, when you hit him, make him feel you. Now, Skalski was ejected for targeting from the championship game a year ago. Talk about different fuel. That's provided him fuel just in the midsection of fields. It was still being looked at. You hope it's just having the wind I, knocked out of him. I, is Bill, I'd like to ask Bill, I, and again, Bill, the, the, the targeting call that, that Chris just referred to, he did lower his helmet there for the, the uh, crown of his helmet. Uh, yeah, they just your, stopped the game for yeah. the review. Yeah. He does I, have I the crown think, of the helmet down. Yeah. Forcible that's what contact. I, I see a targeting call here. Yeah, that's what I, th I thought you might jump in there. You know, two subplots. Fields, is he okay? Can he continue? Finally help to his feet. And what about the fate of Skalski? As you point out, Kirk, he's the defensive quarterback of that front seven already without Turner for the rest of this quarter. Looks like Justin's okay. Yeah. That was a big hit. David Alvarez will get on the phone here. And, 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 and Rick Wimbier that, is the Big 12 replay official. That's a classic, classic crown of the helmet. Yeah, and it doesn't matter when you use the crown of the helmet. It doesn't matter whether you go high, whether you no. go midsection. Bill, I think sometimes 
there's confusion on what the point you just said. I think sometimes people get caught up in thinking you have to hit the head like a helmet to helmet. That's a completely different foul. Correct. You Very know what similar the thing, to, the thing really, that's I was going to say sim similar to what Sean Wade did last year. Uh, if you think about when he hit uh, Trevor Lawrence on that blitz, they kind of turned the game around. It, it, it was the crown of the helmet on Sean Wade. Buckeye fans wondering if it'll be the same thing in reverse. This would be crucial. Skalski is disqualified for a second straight game in this building. Wow. Here's Alvarez with a verdict from the booth. After further review, number 47 was confirmed for targeting. The penalty will be half the distance to the goal and an automatic first down. Number 47 is disqualified. So Skalski is out. That is a huge blow, just as it was last year for Ohio State. The game-changing disqualification of Wade got Lawrence going. Fields seems to be okay. Very little experience, Kirk, behind him at quarterback. Yeah, I was going to say, well, if you go back to Skowski, Jake Venables, of course, as you know, Chris, is, is out. You know, he, he got injured at Virginia Tech. Kane Patterson now, a, a young player who's not played a ton of football, number 17, will, will come in more than likely for James Skowski. So they do not have a lot of depth, and they lose their leader of that front. So you've got your leader in Nolan Turner in the back end, and there's Kane Patterson now, who's a very athletic and very talented, but very inexperienced linebacker who steps in for the glue. The Meanwhile, guy that, that, that keeps the front seven it's together. first and goal, and C.J. Stroud is in at quarterback. True freshman from California who's not thrown a pass this year. Had a big, long touchdown run and mop-up time against Michigan State. And... Be surprised if he stays in more than a play based on the way. Well, maybe he is. Oh, there we go. I thought Justin Fields had a look in his eye like getting a drink of water. He wasn't going to be out very long. Now he's showing some toughness there. I, I, I bet he's not pain free at the moment, but he's not going to no. let that stop him. This is crucial now as the Buckeyes try to stretch this seven point lead. Fields on the run, launches for the end zone, coming back, caught for a touchdown by Olave. And the Buckeyes stretch the lead. And Fields kind of limping to the sidelines, still not right, but delivered a strike. Wow, you, you talk about guts. Justin Fields showing that right now. That was a big hit that he took from James Skowski. Goes out for one play, comes back in. Makes a great throw to Olave. How fitting that he finds Olave for a touchdown in the corner. Very reminiscent of Mac Jones' touchdown earlier this afternoon to, to Devontae Smith. We talked about how driven, how motivated Fields was. That was a statement play, Kirk. You're exactly right. Gets up, finds Olave, who eludes Sheridan Jones, and then limps to the sidelines. But it's Ohio State. Up by a couple of scores now as we approach halftime. In pain, but in front by two scores. Justin Fields walking to the 10 in obvious pain. The shot delivered by Skowski. He's ejected for targeting. Fields out for one play, comes right back in and fires a strike to his favorite target to go up by 14 but was still grimacing and clearly is going to have to Kirk fight through this apparently the rest of the game as long as he's able to go. Yeah I think I think when he threw that touchdown pass you really saw the pain that he was dealing with when he came over to that sideline. Blake Hobiel hasn't looked right since warm up so he's not kicking off this time. Dominic DiMaggio is in actually the most of the kicking off this season to ETN who Fields the kick and then just backs out of bounds at the five. So that is a mental mistake, and Lawrence is going to be backed up. Or did he make a fair catch? This was last year's championship game. Skalski lowers the head against Justin Jefferson, kicked out for targeting there. That was such a bad taste in his mouth. You hate to make that your last play of the season. Here he is back in the same building and ex disqualified again for targeting. And remember, because of an injury earlier this year, we've seen this defense with James Skowski. We've seen them without James Skowski. When they lost to Notre Dame in South Bend, that was without Skowski's leadership in the middle of that defense versus when they played him 
with Skowski in Charlotte, it was a different team. ETM, by the way, called fair catch, so they take over at the 25. It's Lawrence running for a first down across the 35. Maria? I just want to update on Justin Fields. Right now, he's in the tent. Ryan Day has already gone in to check on him. Chris Olave spent about two minutes inside there checking in with his quarterback, and he made a beeline straight over to the bench, spent some time away from the team, really grimacing and obviously in pain from that right side. Thanks, Maria. Meanwhile, Lawrence batted down to the line of scrimmage. Now it's Trevor's turn to respond. They got down 18 when he was out against BC. Of course, lost the game to Notre Dame. With Lawrence, the quarterback, they have not trailed like this. They trailed briefly against the Hokies for like 10 snaps, Kirk. But this is new for him this year. Yeah, he stares down his receiver here. Togi, 72 in the middle. Good job of getting that left hand up to knock the ball down. It's a screen. Rodgers comes back. But he's dragged down behind the line by linebacker Justin Hilliard. And this Buckeye defense is playing with some swag now. Uh, they're feeding off of what their quarterback Justin Fields did. They set this screen up to the right, and they're just kind of using that as a decoy. They come back to the left. But Ohio State, the speed of that secondary and the linebackers, Hilliard does a really good job of feeling that and showing he can make a play there against the fleet-footed Amari Rodgers. Now down two scores. Lawrence faces a third and 13. Just one for four on third down tonight. And a whistle on a false start up front. So the aggressive Buckeye defense. False start. Offense. Number 79, five yard penalty. Still. Chris, we talked third earlier down. about Brandon Streeter. And I think now is where you really start to think about Tony Elliott is not here to call plays. You know, this is where Brandon Streeter, who's a very talented young coach, but has been put in a position tonight with Tony Elliott testing positive for COVID to call the plays along with Dabo Sweeney and the rest of the offensive staff. But I'm not saying he can't do a good job, but it's different. Affects the continuity of what this offense has been about all year. Big time. They're off the script now. They have to react on the fly. Powell makes a catch in traffic. Spins. Doesn't quite get first down yardage. Fought back near the marker, but it's fourth down. Werner and Wade combined on the stop. Yeah, got him to third the moments and long. on the field. Now they'll they'll switch it up. Try to get him to third and long. So you just try to you play zone. You can keep the ball in front of you. Keep your eyes on the quarterback. Then you got to keep the ball in front. You got to rally, leverage the ball, and tackle. Powell's, Powell's pretty good. He's able to make Williamson miss, but the rest of the Buckeyes are there. Those little mistakes. Jackson Carmen with the false start. Backed him up five more yards and makes the difference between a conversion. You see him grimace almost every time he's following through to throw that ball there on the sideline. Spires gets it up in the jet stream indoors here, but it's going to bounce into the end zone. And it's a 57-yard punt. And Fields will just grit his teeth and go back on the field. 3.20 before halftime, a chance for Ohio State to build on this lead. You know, last year in the game, Ohio State got down into the red zone in the first half and, and came away with three field goals. Been a different story this year. Ohio State's been down into that red zone three times, and they've come away with three touchdowns. It's a Clemson defense that... Allows fewer than 18 points per game. Top 11 in yards gained and yards allowed. Most complete team in the country in that respect coming in. But Ohio State's offense, four first half touchdowns. Sermon running into a crowded box. Now he bounces to the outside. A tough run and another big gain on first down. Goodrich tackled him eventually. So impressed with his effort as a runner. I mean, he, he has such good patience and vision. Loved him as a true freshman when he was at Oklahoma in that, in that offense. He played along with Baker Mayfield, and, and we talked about how he was slow after the transfer, slow to really come on. But as he gains confidence, he really can show you what he's about. He's not just a, a power back. He's not just a speed back. He's got a, a little bit of everything, as he's shown these last two or three weeks. Now makes another cutback. And Sermon moves the ball near the 40. Ohio State has two timeouts. Plenty of time. 
getting it done on the ground. Yeah, and that's his vision. That play's designed to go to the offensive line, to their left side, but Clemson took that away, so he's able to use that vision and cut back and go the other way. Once again, Tigers are not really lined up at the snap, able to stop Sermon for a three-yard gain that time. To look at Trey Sermon. He, he made the biggest play he's made all season as a receiver, hurdling people early in the game, and then began to run with that same ferocity we've seen the last couple of games, especially in Indy. Already a, over 100 yards here in this first half, and you can see he's really feeling it uh, in this offense. And and you know, with with James Skalski out, Brent Venables, a common theme for his defense, has been not getting lined up. Another Buckeye player down. Differences against Northwestern, Kirk. He only had 60 yards at halftime. 271 right. in the second half. And incredibly, he had more than 200 yards before any contact at all. That's how well the guys blocked up front. Freddie George in his Heisman Trophy season. Had the record. Keith Byers threw a shoot Byers against Illinois. And I, I was probably. watching that game live. Zeke, of course, is on there. He had 274 yards over in Bloomington. Eddie George <laughs> in a Heisman year goes over 300 yards. That was the record right there until just a couple weeks ago. Yeah, stood for a quarter century. You thought Sermon had no chance the way it looked at halftime. And an overpowering performance by those guys up front against a very good Northwestern defense. You have to earn everything you get against the Wildcats of Pat Fitzgerald. And that made that impressive. Jones is the backup for Harry Miller, who has to start at left guard tonight with the sophomore unavailable. So the depth perhaps being tested in that offensive line. He's able to walk to the field. He reached yeah, right, out. Right where, right where Trey Sermon was cutting back. And he's, you know, he, he, he's played earlier. Jones has played earlier when, when Ohio State had a lot of the offensive linemen out in East Lansing. He played in that game against Michigan State and actually played as well as any of the offensive linemen. Looks like they're going to bring in the true freshman, Paris Johnson, who's usually a tackle but can play guard. 77 will be in there. So you said it, Chris. Their depth being tested for both teams for Ohio State. It said that, that left guard. Second and six inside of two minutes before the break. Fields steps up and took a brief look downfield, then took a big hit from Balin Specter again. Slow to get up in you know, Ohio State on third down. Spend a time Chris, out. Wa watch Fields instead of doing what he's done most of tonight. He just kind of gives up on the play because of that injury. And he's just getting down. You know, I mean, he's been a he's been a tear for this defense to have to contain with his legs. But now after that big hit, you can see he's not even trying to fight for yards. He's just trying to avoid being hit. He just went down. Tigers and Buckeyes play. You better strap it up. It's going to be physical. It's going to be very personal. You escape the cravings. Magic fries are back. Run to Taco Bell. So Ohio State, they kicked off, so they'll get the football to begin the second half. And it's been Clemson is so dominant in the last four minutes of the first half, first four minutes of the second half, they call it the swing eight. Almost unbeatable when they dominate that eight-minute stretch. Ohio State trying to turn the tables here. They need nine on third down. Can Sermon get it? Spins, fights, are you kidding me? They just run on third and nine and move the sticks out near midfield. Boy, nice job of the right side, the center, Josh Myers, who's one of the best in the country. The right guard, Wyatt Davis, also sustaining, keeping their, their blocks, sustaining their blocks to allow Trey Sermon to fight for those extra yards and show that determination to get the first down for Ohio State. Now Fields from the pocket, again, took a look downfield, just checks it down, and it's Sermon in heavy traffic, able to weave his way inside the Clemson 45. Buckeyes still with two timeouts. Yeah, I was going to say they had two timeouts. You got a veteran quarterback who, who's in sync with his with his coach Ryan Day. These are the drills you work on, especially the 12 days leading up to a semifinal game. 
Playing with tempo, Tigers barely set this time. Field steps up, dumps it down. Sermon again has another first down inside the 40. Uh, the, the safeties underneath getting tremendous depth. Looks like another injury. This time it's K.J. Henry. Sophomore defensive end. Appears to be in pain. Man, these games between these two teams. So hard hitting. Both teams just laying it on the line. It's only the first half. Aerial coverage brought up by Goodyear. No matter what the season throws your way, keep moving forward. Goodyear more driven. Buckeyes driven 42 yards in the seven plays here, trying to stretch the lead. Another look at play that Henry what, Malcolm, Green the Chris, Malcolm Green at the bottom. Chris Malcolm Green at the bottom is coming to try to get pressure, and then he he may have just kind of bumped into KJ Henry with his with his with his with his legs. See right there, they collide behind Fields. That left knee flexing at an awkward angle, didn't it? Yeah. Xavier Thomas, the junior defensive end, again. Not available as he wasn't in Charlotte, not a COVID related issue, so he's not there. Henry, starting defensive end. And this is a Clemson defense that started 23 different guys. That's a huge number. Typically, you know, 15 or 16 different guys yeah. will start. 23. 40 different Clemson players have started this season on both sides of the ball. 26 of them were first time starters. Second only to Air Force. So a test of this talented roster's depth. And it may be further tested as Henry is limping off very slowly. Boy, I, I tell you, at that, that, that halftime, not only making you're going to check all these injuries with the, with the medical staff on both sides, that's one adjustment to see who can come back and play. But the adjustments, both these teams known for in-game adjustments, the adjustments that they're going to try to make and learn from one another and what teams are, what each side of the ball is trying to do to each other and come out in this second half, it, it's going to make for really interesting 30 minutes of football. You wonder, Kirk, the offensive conversation. We talked about Tony Elliott not able to be here. He also cannot assist from afar. You can't text or call. So Davos Sweeney, no doubt, will confer with the play caller tonight, Brandon Streeter. Cam Aiken, one of the offensive assistants who is involved in putting the game plan together. He's also not available tonight, Kirk. Yeah, yeah he's, he's a big part of, of uh, the offensive scheme. The first down run to the right side. Sermon ducks down for no gain. So you're right. Some guys would be gritting their teeth, dealing with pain at halftime, but also the, the wheels spinning with the brain trust trying to figure out how to adjust for the second 30 minutes. Fields. Lost it downfield way over Olavi's head. Now just 27 seconds in the half. They still have the two timeouts, but not in field goal range at the moment. Remember, the Hobiel has not looked right, and he has not kicked off the last time. He missed a couple games with a groin injury this year. He's reliable when healthy, but you wonder if that's in Ryan Day's head. Fields delivers a strike across the middle. It's Rucker. And the tight end bangs down inside the 15 yard line. Tight ends, a huge part of the attack tonight. Boy, he gets this ball thrown right in front of Xanders. Watch the middle linebacker. Spectre comes. It opens up, but almost. Xanders gets a hand on it, but instead it's the big fella, Ruckert, who shows that he can not only catch the ball, but he's got the skill set of a wide receiver running with the ball after the catch. These guys have been mauling the line of scrimmage, doing the dirty work, blocking for most of this season. Ruckert had nine catches and three touchdowns coming in, but he and Farrell really numb for the work in the running game. Tonight, stepping up big as receivers. On first down, Sermon smacked immediately by Miles Murphy behind the line of scrimmage. Kane Patterson also filling. Man who's filling in for Skalski. Yeah, he's made a couple plays on Sermon since he's been in there. He's getting some penetration. He's got really good instincts for a young linebacker. 
Ohio State will spend a timeout. They still have the one remaining 15 seconds as they're down in the red zone again. College football playoff national championship trophy here in New Orleans presented by Dr. Pepper awarded in Miami Monday night January 11th. Nick Saban and the Tide will be awaiting the winner here. Beignets surrounding the trophy there at the Cafe du Monde, Kirk. We'll, we'll FedEx you a couple of beignets. Can, can you handle that? I appreciate that? that. Thank you, sir. I appreciate you thinking of me. Will it be Ohio State and Alabama a rematch of the classic fight here six years ago? They haven't met since. Or will Lawrence get another shot at the Crimson Tide? A lot of football to be played. They came from 16 down, of course, last year. No panic on the Clemson sideline, but Ohio State trying to add to the lead here now. Well, he spread it around 15 completions, seven different receivers. Makes it tough on the defense. From the pocket, a strike across the middle. Caught, touchdown, Rucker again. What a huge night for the tight ends and for Fields. Buckeyes up three scores. Chris, you're going to love this. Much as you've been talking about the tight ends, Kevin Wilson, who's the offensive coordinator and works with the tight ends, he told us on our Zoom that, you know, I've been, I've been trying to tell Coach Day we got to get the ball to the tight ends. Maybe this will be the week. It sure is. Both tight ends are active. You've talked about that. Farrell actually takes a defender with him, and it opens up this play for Jeremy Rucker and a great throw, and again, guts by Justin Fields. Big time. You got the feeling, though, they've been quiet, too quiet. If you're going to beat a Venables defense, you got to involve guys. He's not expecting you to use his major weapons, and that's what Day has done. Watch Farrell work, Chris, to the inside and take the defender right over the middle of the field with him. Now Rucker kind of gives an outside look. I'm telling you, he's like a receiver, even though he's 6'5", 250. The top tight end that came out of high school football his senior year does a nice job. And because of Farrell took away the, the safety, Charleston, it opened it up. And every time Field steps and throws, he's feeling that pain on the right side of his, uh, his body. But he's also playing with a lot of determination, that fuel from the loss a year ago, the two interceptions out in Glendale, the doubters, the skeptics. His own play last game against Northwestern, there's no shortage of fuel. He took on a lot of extra fuel, and it is inspiring to watch him play tonight. And Clemson, if they're going to make it back to a championship game, they have a lot of work to do, and it's going to start with getting a stop to begin the third quarter. The short kickoff. And it's fielded and fair caught by the up man. Well, for every field goal and extra point made, Allstate makes a contribution to the university's general scholarship fund. Thank you, Allstate. Big story tonight for Ohio State, Kirk. No field goals. Five PATs efficient in the red zone. The missing yeah. ingredient last year. Yeah, yeah, four four red zone trips and four touchdowns. And and it, at one point in that last drive, you thought maybe they're going to try to settle for a field goal. But Ryan Day knew exactly what he wanted to do, knew the matchup where he could take advantage of it, kept pressing on and, and eventually got the touchdown. Look at look at those yards, total yards in the second quarter. And Lawrence is yet to throw a touchdown pass tonight. Just hands off to ETN and that'll be the final play of this first half. Clemson's offense got off to a fast start. They led 7-zip and 14-7. The Buckeyes come roaring back. 28 unanswered to lead by three touchdowns at halftime. And Justin Fields a testament to toughness. Let's get on to Maria with Ryan Day. Well, Coach, we see your quarterbacks obviously battling through some pain. What can you tell us about his injury? Uh, I can just tell you he's a really tough kid. He's got the heart of a lion, and he's got to play for 30 more minutes. And what do you say about the way your team has asserted themselves in the first half? Uh, I mean, it's a good start, but, you know, this is, a, this is a championship team we're playing. So we know no matter what happens in halftime, we're going to come in. We're going to have to play another 30 minutes. They're going to come out swinging. This drive coming out of halftime is going to be huge. All right, thanks, Coach. Let's go over to Tom with Dabo. Maria, thank you very much. Dabo down three scores and without one of your key defensive leaders in Skowski having been ejected. What are the adjustments you need to make? Well, we got to play better in the secondary, first of all. Lots of busted plays, and, uh, and, and then we're not stopping the run game. Keeping the ball, you know, hadn't been able to stop them. So give them credit. They got us on our heels. 
we got a long way to go. We got we got to get in here and figure out a way to stop the run. We got to clean up the miscommunications on the back end. Hopefully, getting Nolan back will help us a little bit, and then and then find our rhythm a little bit offensively. We've been, like I said, some delays in getting the ball, but they got off to a good start. But give them credit; they 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 dominated us this half. Appreciate it, Dad. Got it. Almost 400 yards of offense for Ohio State. They've just about doubled up Clemson in that department, and they lead it 35-14. But as Day said, a lot more football to be played here in the Superdome. The halftime report after these messages. You're watching the All-State Sugar Bowl on ESPN. Set for the second half, the college football playoff semifinal at the All-State Sugar Bowl. Clemson down by 21 points as Ohio State plays a second quarter for the ages. Total dominance by the Buckeyes as we get the football to begin the third quarter. Welcome back. Chris Fowler at Dome, Kirk Curb Street in Nashville. Wow, Kirk, we did not expect this, but the Buckeyes being doubted and dismissed as serious contenders brought a lot of fuel to the party tonight. Yeah, this team showed up with a chip on its shoulder. It's 14 to 14 into the first quarter. The second quarter, Ohio State really starting to assert themselves. I think on both sides of the ball, we saw what the quarterback could do in Justin Fields, Trey Sermon. But how about in the trenches? I think if there's anything you've got to be surprised about, it's the way Ohio State's been able to control things up front. Ryan Day has his team incredibly well prepared on both sides of the ball. After an eventful first half, Tigers will not have James Skalski, their middle linebacker, rejected for targeting. But now they can get their quarterback of the secondary, Nolan Turner, back, who was excluded from the first half because of targeting against Notre Dame. And we'll see the Capital One rewarding performance. Takes a look at the toughness and grit and accuracy of Justin Fields. Yeah, he took that hit and, and right came out for one play, came back, made that touchdown, and you could see the pain he was really in. But they weren't done. They continued to get the ball down the field. Next time they had it, find Rucker again for a touchdown to the big tight end. Four touchdown passes, just two incompletions in the first half. We'll keep a close eye, Chris. I was going to say on just how he is feeling after having that break at, at halftime and how Nolan Turner can help this secondary out. Ray Sermon had a big first half, and he bursts forward as the Buckeyes continue to maul that Tiger defensive line. Maria. I mean, well, Chris, I checked in with Ryan Day, and he said that he told Justin Fields that he has to go back out and play and stay loose. Said he just got banged up. He did not have an X-ray during that halftime, and obviously he came out and was ready to play with this team in the second half. That's good news. We're told that Balin Spector, the Clemson linebacker, did have an X-ray, and Sermon just weaving his way out near the 50. Dominance up front. Dominance led by Josh Myers, who, who kind of works to the right and then seals it back to the left against the backer, Kane Patterson. Watch 71. Work right, get up to the second level, seal it, open it up. What a hole there by the Ohio State offense line opening things up for Trey Sermon. 83 yards in the first half before contact for Trey Sermon. An offensive line without the starting left guard, Harry Miller, Matthew Jones back in the game. He left briefly with an injury, but he's good to go. And Sermon that time spun down after a two yard game by Tyler Davis again. So much before contact again tonight. Yeah, I mean, they're doing a good job of mixing up the play calling, but you can see he's still bringing that stiff arm. He's still showing that he's got physicality, but look at the offensive line open things up. This is when Clemson didn't get lined up right. Ryan Day times it up perfectly with Justin Fields. They get the ball to Sermon, but he is really in a rhythm and a good flow. Nice balanced attack by Ohio State. Field looking to throw at plenty of time. Down the middle of the field, Olave wide open, takes a hit but the Buckeyes are threatening in the red zone again. They go trips into the boundary, continues to cause confusion. Watch him work from the outside to the middle. Nobody runs with him to the middle of the field. Not Kane Patterson. There wasn't a safety. Mike Jones didn't go with him. So trips into the boundary. Nobody finds Olave, their most gifted receiver. He's all alone, and Fields finds him. You know, he saw him all along, working from the outside of that trips formation, and eventually comes free over the middle, and a good job of giving him a chance to get the ball early so he could protect himself before taking on that hit. The corner, Mario Goodrich, who delivered the hit on Olave, was slow to get up, being helped to the sidelines here, but Ohio State threatening to just blow this game wide open. They have been tough 
down here in the red zone. All of the frustration from a year ago when they yep. could not cash in, couldn't stretch the lead. It cost them dearly. This is Sermon again. Chris, that, that was a big emphasis in his preparation. Number one, leave no doubt as far as Ryan Day's message to his team. And the second part for this offense was the execution, the confidence that they had coming into this game with their offensive line, with the quarterback, with the backs led by Trey Sermon, the receivers. They felt they matched up well. But when they got into the red zone after last year where it cost them, they wanted touchdowns. And so far, they're four for four, like you said. Remember, Sermon has to be the lone feature back tonight. Master Teague not available with concussion against Northwestern. So Sermon busy still. He's up to the workload. He's waited a long time to show his talents. You mentioned the injury at Oklahoma, the slow start this season. A lot of pent-up frustration is coming out in the way this man is running. You know, he, he's been a beneficiary of Ryan Day to me mixing tempo. You know, sometimes you think of tempo and it's up-tempo, it's going fast. What we're learning about Ryan Day tonight is sometimes he is an up-tempo guy. But tonight, he's mixing up the tempo, sometimes fast, sometimes he'll wait until there's about eight or ten seconds left, then he goes to the line of scrimmage fast with Justin Fields, making it tough on Brent Venables and his defense to get their own rhythm established. Third and eight, pump fake, end zone throw, and that's a mistake, and an interception by Mike Jones. Fields forced that one into traffic. And it's the first takeaway for the Tiger defense, much needed. Chris, I think Miles Murphy may have got his hand on this ball and affected that ball kind of was floating out of his hand. Watch 98, a little bit of a stunt up front, right before he throws it, right there, I think on his follow through. I think he got his, see that ball kind of floating on him? I think that ball's either out of bounds or it's, it's in the back line. Instead, he, it, the ball kind of flutters on him on that folly half. Yeah, he did, in fact, get his hand on it which led to eventually the interception by Jones. First turnover tonight, can it spark Clemson? Well, join us virtually, the college football playoff all access experience, exclusive CFP content, games, prizes available. Collegefootballplayoff.com slash all access, more information. Ryan Day talk about the importance of the opening possession of the third quarter. Buckeyes marched it. 63 yards for the interception sets up Clemson and now beginning of the long climb for Lawrence and company their first possession it's a long throw and the catch by EJ Williams on the far side Tom Chris the number one adjustment that Dabo Sweeney wanted to make was achieved he knew that they needed to start this half by getting a stop now offensively they needed to develop some rhythm with Trevor Lawrence to find ways to build their way back into this game not to realize that they need a home run but to put together successful drives and series to chip into this lead. What if they get Amari Rodgers involved, Tom? On the edge there, Rodgers held to just 27 receiving yards in the first half, but already makes an impact play. Tigers and you go the back, yeah, Chris, you go back to how this game started. The, the biggest concern Ohio State had was the edges of their defense, defending in space. What would they do if you got Travis Etienne or an Amari Rodgers out on the edge? And that's how Clemson moved the ball up and down the field early. Looks like Goodrich is going to go off the field a corner from Clemson. But right here, these first couple plays, they're going, kind of going back to that, hitting those edges. So they take a shot on second and short. Lawrence delivers a short strike, and the catch is made by Brandon Spector, who's got a first down at midfield. And again, if they're going to give you some of these easy throws, these underneath throws, and you got a quarterback like like Trevor Lawrence who can deliver it accurately, you got to do that. By the way, I mean, he got rid of that ball pretty quickly, and he's lucky he did because Haskell Garrett just pushed Will Putnam right into the face of Lawrence right as he got rid of that ball. No sacks for Ohio State, but they have influenced Lawrence with pressure several times tonight. Etienne, a quiet first half running the ball. Nice forward for eight. Travis, as a receiver, had three catches, but just 14 rushing yards in the first half. Yeah, he, he and Trevor Lawrence, we thought we'd see their legs more involved and really didn't see a lot of that. This time, Garrett slowed just a bit because he had to respect Trevor Lawrence on that read. They're reading the inside now. You know, we see Chip Kelly do that at Oregon. He was one of the first to do that. Rich Rod over at West Virginia. Instead of reading the end man, let's, let's change it up. Read the guys in the inside. That time he's reading Haskell Garrett on the inside. 
On second and two, Lawrence takes off and weaves his way near the marker. They'll spot him just outside the 40. Togiai and Borland on the tackle. It's going to be third and inches, at least where they're spotting it right now. Kind of drive that could change everything for Clemson if they can find the end zone. ETN deep in the pistol. They just need a couple inches. And Travis is going to make it down inside the 40. Tom reporting he was cramping in the first half. Really hasn't been himself. Had that big breakout game against Notre Dame. Finally over 100 yards rushing, but hasn't offered much tonight. Maria? Guys, right now, Haskell Garrett is on the sideline for Ohio State's defense. He's pointing to his left knee and talking to the athletic training staff right now, but obviously a big part of the heart and soul of the Ohio State defense. Well, the picture of perseverance, the man who was shot in the face, bullet went in both cheeks as he's trying to be a good Samaritan in the offseason. Amazing, he's been playing football this season. Play action. Lawrence launches and has Powell wide open to shove Wade out of the way and is going to be spotted out down near the 10. And Cornell Powell's a guy that can make plays. See Sean Wade losing ground, losing ground, and that's what they want to try to attack. Even though Sean Wade is talented, they feel good about Wade being soft in coverage that Powell can beat him, and there's the accuracy and how important that is from Trevor Lawrence. Sometimes you avoid an All-American, and sometimes because of his technique, if he's losing ground like that, you want to go after him. First and goal right from the 10. Little confusion, and the ball is batted up in the air. It's incomplete. Seven Banks was there. ETN and Trevor not on the same page that with the fake. Uh, Seven Banks, I think, makes a good play. Keep in mind, he's 6'1", about 200 pounds, almost built like a safety. Little mix-up in the backfield there. Maybe affected Trevor Lawrence. ETN went right. He fakes left. At least ETN kind of looking back at him, but really nice coverage that time by Banks getting that right hand around. Nice play of the drive. Lawrence flips it into flats. Howe stretches for the pylon. Touchdown! And the Tigers begin to chip away. Powell beating Sean Wade a couple times on that drive. First TD pass for Trevor. That's a nine play 80 yard touchdown drive for Clemson and a good answer to be able to come up with the interception and then drive, put a drive together like that. Again, there's that soft coverage. We saw that really, Chris, on this entire drive. When they threw the ball, it was Ohio State soft in coverage, Clemson taking those underneath throws and then relying on their athletes to make a play after the catch. And this time Powell gets to the corner of the end zone before Proctor pushes him out. Powell, the old man of that receiving core. He's 23 years old. One of those 50 year seniors who arrived at Clemson way back in 2016. So it's the dream start to the Tigers in the second half after being completely outplayed in the second quarter. Back to a 14 point game midway in the third. The Allstate Sugar Bowl, brought to you by Allstate. You've never been in better hands. AT&T 5G, and Taco Bell's Nacho Fries. 14-point game here in the Superdome. The AT&T countdown to the CFP National Championship game. Takes it to impressive performance by the Crimson Tide in Arlington. The triplets did well. Look at Najee Harris hurdling an Irish defender and just rumbling down the sideline. And then... Mac Jones and Devontae Smith front and center in the Heisman conversation hook up again. Irish a late touchdown, but it was the Tide emphatically stamping their ticket to the championship game at Hard Rock Stadium. Waiting the winner of this one. No doubt looking in with great interest. Now. Fields and the Buckeye offense back to work. The lead has been trimmed to 14, and the kickoff must be played. It took a bounce backwards there, and Sermon there to alertly fall on it, but Fields will be backed up now inside the 10. A little confusion on the back end here. Well, McCall Ball was bounced. hoping it bounced in the end zone. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. checked up yeah. for him. It did check up. 
And remember, that could be recovered by the Clemson team. So Sermon falls on it, but bad field position. It was the long arm of Miles Murphy getting a thumb on that pass of fields, and then Jones intercepting it in the end zone, and all of a sudden, the sideline, the guys in orange, has some life. Looking to throw on first down. Fields has plenty of time. Now retreats, tries to direct his receivers, and has to just throw it away. There was nobody open. Eventually, Murphy got there to pressure him. Chris, you're right. That, that's everything to do with coverage. Nice job of taking away everything downfield. Fields working through his progressions, but just nothing there. And he ends up just throwing that one away. Murphy dropping down on the field. Wonder if the uh, cramping will build up here. Here's, here's how good the coverage was, Kirk. I mean, there's just nobody to throw to. Dropping back in zone. And feels a throwaway. This Clemson defense just not used to being completely manhandled up front, looking very confused. Buckeyes over 200 yards in the second quarter alone. You know, Venables had uh, some strident conversations with his guys at the yeah. break. Now let's see if Miles Murphy, he's, he's a, a, a big time player for Venables in this defense. They need him. Saw him make that play on that tip pass that eventually Mike Jones intercepted. KJ Henry limped off earlier. He's back in there. Balin Spector told you he was x rayed, but he's going out there. It's Sermon. Trying to make something of very little, and he's going to be stopped right near the line of scrimmage by Spectre. It'll be third and long. Momentum building now for the Tigers. Watch the two linebackers in the inside getting downhill. We didn't see a lot of that in the first half. They're not hesitating right now. They're taking the fight to the Ohio State offensive line. The Ohio State offensive line was doing combination blocks, climbing up to the second level. Right now, Kane Patterson, Braylon Spector, they're getting downhill and trying to get the sermon before that offensive line can get to them. Tigers don't bring pressure on third one. They drop into coverage and Fields again looking for someone. Checks it down to Sermon. Can he get there? Yes, it's a first down out across the 20. Well, that is a great He's job. Still running. Right. He's still running. Is this going to be shades of what we saw from Michael Dyer and Auburn? The signal is touchdown. On the field, they signal a touchdown. Did he stay up? Did he land on the defender? Wow. What a huge call this will be. He came Under down on Kane Patterson. I thought maybe his left knee touched, but he must have stayed on top of the body. Of course, they'll review it. He wasn't running, and the sideline says, go, go. Yeah, there's Kane Previous Patterson comes in. See if his elbow touched. Not being down. Oh, yeah. The elbow looks like right there. Oh, absolutely, he's down with the see elbow. See the rest of the body. I see what the officials saw. The elbow's down there. See, the body touched it all. You can't see it really from that angle. His knee may You're have Right, Dyer in, or in the Oregon game <laughs> is exactly what that is. The, the elbow touch is right there. In that play, fans will recall, landed an Oregon defender, got up and run, and eventually set up the game-winning field goal. I thought that left knee game. may have touched. Let, let, let's see. Uh, he's on Patterson right here. The left elbow, or the, the elbow's down. Yeah, let's the elbow the puts knees. him down. Yeah. And yeah, then the knee touches as well. So take the touchdown off the board and move the ball all the way back. It is a, a first down run. By the, by the way, Chris, the, the, the play by Fields, I mean, Brent Venables finally, they, his defense just started to kind of get a little bit of momentum, a little confidence, third down and long. You talked about, look at the coverage downfield. They got everybody covered. There's Justin Fields checking it down. Sounds like a simple thing, but sometimes when you're trying to make a play all the time, you want to force something downfield. This is an area that he's really worked to improve. Find that check down. Don't always have to use your legs. Check it down to Trey Sermon. He can get the first down on third and long. It's exactly what they're able to do. Malcolm Green, the freshman corner, missed that tackle. Ohio State Crooks already won 52 plays. Clemson's depth being tested. Remember, if you joined us late, Skalski out for targeting. Turner comes back. Goodrich After has been knocked review, out. The runner is down back. at the 23-yard line. It will be first and 10. 
Please reset the game clock to 7.01, please. 7.01. Oh, Trey, he knew he was down. He said, I'll take the touchdown if you're going to give it to me, but I know I was down. But can Ohio State, on the basis of that third down conversion, kind of get the rhythm going? They can sense that Lawrence and this Tiger offense is heating up. This thing's far from finished. Oh, yeah, and especially uh, the way they lost, the, fe the feeling that they had walking off of that field last year where they felt they outplayed them. They wanted everything to have another opportunity. You know that Ryan Day talked to his team at halftime. It's 0-0. And then for Clemson to start making a little bit of a run like this, big possession as far as momentum is concerned here. It's Mayan Williams who comes in spelling Sermon and the first carry for the freshman from Cincinnati. Solid first down gain. Just not used to seeing a Brent Venables defense out of sorts as far as a rhythm. Usually they're the ones that are dictating things and they're the aggressor. I mean, they're second in the nation almost every year, first or second in tackles for a loss, top five every year in sacks. They, they play on the other side of the line of scrimmage against everybody that they play. Not tonight. Buckeyes approaching 500 yards offense. This is Williams who makes a cutback. Big fella. He's a strong runner, about 230 pounds. <laughs> Nolan Turner makes the tackle. He's waited a long time to make an impact play. How about, how about Williams? I mean, a little bit of wiggle. Guy's 230. He's known really for his power, but some vision, and he puts that foot in the ground, gets right around the defensive end, Reagan Upshaw, and then picks up a first down. Reminder, the master Teague out of the concussion suffered against Northwestern. Williams only had seven Big. carries all year long. Kind of a modest recruit by Ohio State standards. Arrives Kirk as a three-star out of Cincinnati. Now getting some touches in a very big game. First down. He's got it again. He slipped as he tried to make the cut and his stop for no game. That, that, that whole that play opened up there if he was able to keep his footing for some positive yards. Again, they slant the angle. They twist. It creates negative plays, but it can also create positive plays for the offense. Just loses his footing. You talked about what's uncharacteristic, Kirk. Ohio State has 10 runs of 10 plus yards tonight. Just chunks on the ground. Sermon back in on second and 10. Four man rush. Fields has time. Launches downfield. It's Olave. He's got Touchdown, Ohio State! A deep strike, and the Buckeyes stretch the lead again. 56 yards. Wow. Great patience by Justin Fields. He went all the way from the right and came all the way back to his left to find the defense out of position. And then he shows you the arm strength downfield. Olave, this play took a while. I mean, it, it, the offensive line does a good job. Look how he gets behind Nolan Turner. I don't know if they thought he could make that throw, Chris. Watch Nolan Turner, the back end of this. Right at the 50-yard line, kind of working towards the middle. He takes that crossing route, opens it up for the post, and then Justin Fields shows you the arm strength and the accuracy to make that throw where he gets behind Kendrick and Turner. That midsection might be hurting from that shot from Skalski, but he just torqued that core around, heaved it downfield. Olave, of course, who was so disappointed in the end of the game last year, making the touchdown catch. By the way, it's Wyatt Davis, All-American guard for Ohio State, who was down on the field way back at the 39. So we'll await the PAT. The lead is back to 20. Will they take a look at Davis? A year ago, wires crossed. Instead of a game-winning touchdown pass, it was an interception to clinch the Clemson victory as Olave broke the route outside, fields threw it right at the goal post. Turner was there for the pick. Kirk, no wires crossed tonight so far. No, not at all. He, you know, he, he thought that Fields was scrambling and he broke off the route, like you said, but he has had a monster night tonight. Stays on the post all the way through, finishes the play, and scores another touchdown for Ohio State. Six for 132 and two. Welcome back to the fold, Chris Olave. And once again, Trevor Lawrence and the Tigers are down by three touchdowns. 4.55 left in the third.
go back and look at this touchdown. Mentioned Nolan Turner, who's just coming into the second half as a leader back there, but he gets caught up. He sees Garrett Phillip, or Garrett Wilson rather, across the middle, just enough to hesitate, just enough to be able to see that. Slows him down from getting back to the middle of the field. And that opened up the post where Olave got, got behind. Kendrick beat him again for a touchdown, and what a throw. And what patience there by Justin Fields to eventually find his man deep for a touchdown. Buckeyes went three and out in their first possession, haven't punted since. Six touchdowns and the interception to start the third quarter. Michael Dukes makes the fair catch. Here's another look at that throw. Threw it 61 yards in the air, put everything he had, Kirk, into the throw. With the injury that he sustained in the first half. And, and people want to talk about accuracy. You know, I know Trevor Lawrence at the next level, people are excited about, and they should be. But they're, they're, you start to get after Trevor, there starts to be two or three or four different names. Justin Fields is showing people that uh, he has what it takes to be able to be a very complete quarterback. You can see the night that he's had, 19 and 23, looking up Alave six times, 132 yards. These two guys wanted this matchup, and so far they've delivered. Lawrence looking to throw quickly on first down. Now will scramble, has room. Pump fakes was very near the line of scrimmage. In fact, he may have been across when the ball was thrown. A flag does come out. He could have run for a little bit, but the last second saw Davis Allen open and made a mistake, I believe. Yeah, I think the line of scrimmage is the 25-yard line. If any part of his body at all is behind the line, he's okay to throw it. It's not, it's not just his upper body. Or where the ball is, I think he. I think he should be okay. He's got such long strides. You're right. The leg was across the 25, but his torso. Well, yeah, it's still right on the 25-yard line. Bill, how do you see that? All right. Now, if the, any part of the body is behind the line, it's a legal pass. Right. Right. Replay can review that, and if the penalty stands, replay can change it to a no call. Bill, that looked like, it'd be on, on that angle that we had, it looked like his body, part of his body the firm, was behind the line. From the discussion, there is no foul. The quarterback was behind the line of scrimmage when he threw the ball, first down. That's so, a good job by the crew to get it together, yeah. and it didn't yeah. even have to go to replay. That's right. Yep. Yeah, further discussion, not further review. <laughs> so Yeah, you, you can see him. A lot quicker, Chris. It's a, I like the further <laughs> discussion. Ten-yard gain to the 35. Again, Lawrence, when he's been a quarterback, the Tigers have just not trailed like this, period. So no panic from Trevor, but it's still a very different experience for this offense. Well, the clock also is their enemy. Lawrence delivers a strike down the middle catch made by Allen so he's become involved it's the Tigers tight ends turn to make catches now yeah that little seam route where, where Allen because of his size he's able to sneak in there behind the backer Borland in front of the safety Proctor and great velocity on the ball there by Trevor Lawrence to give the big tight end at 6-6 a chance to to make the catch and again protect himself from the from the hit from Proctor 24 yard gain. Tigers looking to strike back quickly. Lawrence looking to run all the way. And he'll be dragged down behind the line of scrimmage by Togiai. And the ball's on the ground. Ohio State say it's a turnover. No signal yet. Battling in that pile. Trevor Lawrence kind of set the ball to his side as he was going down. Hilliard came out with it. He can't believe. Yeah. Lawrence can't believe it's a fumble. It, it, he didn't really have any urgency to go get down. the football. It's almost like he just kind of set it off to the right side of his body, and the Buckeye defense started fighting for the ball. I think Haskell Garrett, 92, gets in there. They're ripping at watch, the ball right now. Yeah. See, watch, watch how watch how Haskell Garrett smartly, wisely here picks up the ball, fights for it anyway. Was he losing control already before the knee went down? That'll be what the replay right. officials look at here. He changes the ball from the left hand. It comes the out there. Is under further review. The ruling on the field was a fumble recovered by the defense. You're right, though. He did put his hand on the ball. He, he yeah. was on, body was on the ground. Put his hand on the football. And you're right. He, he clearly felt that that was enough to maintain possession and control. There was no urgency 
other than that, then they rip his hand off the top of the ball. So the well, ball I, I saw the, the left, the, the ball went from the left hand to the right hand. Looked like a fumble. And, and let's see what Bill thinks right here. I've got the, no control of the ball. That just because the hand is on the ball is not possession. It's not control. I've got this as a loose ball. It's a fumble. So they would not consider it control even though he's got the hand on the top of the football and is on the ground. No, that is not control. Right there. That's what we're talking about. Very wisely, just a very wise move by Haskell Garrett to, to, to reach down for that ball to keep it alive and allow the rest of the defense to rally to the ball. Togiai and Garrett, those two studs inside combining in the play. Togiai forced the fumble, and you see Garrett scooping it up. This is an enormous ruling here. Why is it the replay always comes into play when these two teams collide? <laughs> This will be crucial. Ohio State gets the football back up three scores with 19 minutes remaining in this game. This will be the first turnover for the Tigers offense tonight if the call stands. If they retain possession. They've got it at the Ohio State 40. You know, Ohio State had a three and out to start the game. They had the interception to start the second half. And other than that, they put points on the board. I mean, this, this, as you say, Chris, this is a, a critical review. And if it goes in favor of Ohio State, they're, they're looking for potentially a knockout shot. You know, once again, a long review. Remember the, the fumble, no fumble from a year ago? Was it a scoop and score? Was it a completed pass before Ohio State knocked the ball free and ran it for a touchdown? That call went against Ohio State, as they feel most of the big calls in this game did. There's another look. The ball is out there. Higgins makes the catch. Ohio State fought, and then the ball is scooped up and run in for a touchdown. But upon further review, they, they said he didn't have possession of the ball. So it was ruled incomplete and no touchdown. There's the important ruling from David Alvarez and this Big 12 crew. After further review, the ruling on the field stands of a fumble, first down, Ohio State. So the Buckeyes' first takeaway of the night. Togiai caused it. As you said, Haskell Garrett reached down and kept that ball alive, and eventually the Buckeyes got it. Those two players you knew coming in would, would have a chance to be enforcers the way they have been all year for the Ohio State defense. You know, you lose a Chase Young, you lose some high profile guys. People watch the Ohio State defense and say, okay, where, where are the first round picks? They may not have first round picks, but with Larry Johnson coaching them, they still have a lot of talent led by the two interior players. Got a first round pick at quarterback, and Fields is back at it, flipping in the far side there. Catch made by Williams, and all of a sudden, you say there's no panic on the Clemson sideline, but some serious concern. Lawrence hoping this Clemson defense can get the ball back without further damage. I think you see Ryan Day up 21 with, with 3.30 or about 330 to go here in the in the third quarter. I don't think you're going to see his approach change very much. They already have a, a, a nice time of possession advantage, but I don't think they go into any kind of slowdown. I think it's the same kind of tempo. They throw Excellent. again. Catch by Smith and Jigba, knocked down immediately by Booth. No game. And I think Brent Venables has to start taking a few chances in coverage. He's got to tighten things up and, and try to see if his corners can hold up. I know it's been at times tough in coverage for them against Alave and Garrett Wilson. But Lineman giving the quarterback a pep tuck, say keep the chin up. Carmen there. Look guys shuffle around, play clock winding down on second and ten. They snap it at four. Sermon. Heavy traffic. It'll be third down along. Niles Pinkney, the veteran on the tackle. And that time doing a good job of getting off of blocks. Pinkney you also saw it's good to see KJ Henry who limped off earlier, but he's back out on the field, does a nice job of getting off his block, forcing a Sermon back inside. 
Yeah, Ryan Day said we've not played our best game. Only played six games, and it was Kirk far from a complete performance in all three phases in any one of those six no. games, if you'd agree. No, it wasn't. And, and, I, and he would tell you that it's a disadvantage only playing six games because they never were able to kind of find that consistency by only playing six. They were fresh, but not fine-tuned at all coming in. Big pressure blitz, and they sack Fields on third down. That time, Venables brought the house, and it was Brian Brissy there to knock down the quarterback fourth down. Well, he's lined up over the right tackle and twists all the way around. And with all the, watch him over the right tackle, he comes all the way around and comes free because of the pressure from the safety and backers occupied Trey Sermon. So he comes free, miscommunication up front, and the big fella, Brzee, comes up with a big sack on third down. It's Matthew Jones stepping in for the starter, Miller, tonight, who could not block Brzee, his fourth sack of the season. What a career he's going to have before he's done. Amari Rogers awaits the punt at the 10. Just the second punt for Christman tonight. And the first since that opening possession. Fair catch made at the 13-yard line. Aerial coverage on this beautiful New Orleans evening provided by Goodyear to reach the end zone. All you need is drive. Goodyear, more driven. We saw Devontae Smith and Mac Jones this afternoon. Kyle Trask, a disappointing finish to his Florida career. And you're seeing Lawrence tonight. Those are the four finalists for the Heisman Trophy presented virtually Tuesday night, 7 o'clock Eastern time. Jones and Smith, both really impressive. They are the, the favorites to the odds makers. Lawrence got a big endorsement from Davo Sweeney after the ACC championship game. Trask performance last night in the loss to Oklahoma did not factor in. Of course, the votes were done after the conference championship games. Beals trying to stay loose over there. <laughs> ETN cuts it back. He is knocked down by Warner after picking up about eight. So the only thing that Clemson, well, I don't want to say the only thing. After the fumble, they, they lose time off the clock and they lose field position, which when you're down 21 under a minute to go into third quarter is a pretty big deal. Final minute of this quarter. They have not been able to cut into the Ohio State halftime lead. Each team scoring once in the period. Lawrence again trying to make an impact play as a runner. You recall last year when he rumbled all the way to the end zone from 60 plus yards. He's been held in check tonight. Well, they're, they're trying to go to this quarterback counter, trying to get a defense that's going to be overly aggressive and get it, miss a gap, give them better blocking angle. But Tyreeks was not buying. Get a left, does a good job of holding a point, setting the edge there to the defense, getting off the block and the rest of the defense there to help out. That's a grown man play. You're right by Smith is known as a speed rusher, but he held up well as a run stopper. Final seconds of the quarter. Can they get the snap off? They do. Lawrence on the pitch. ETN is hammered right behind the line by Justin Hilliard. And the Buckeye defense punctuates the third quarter with another big tackle for loss. Chris, you said it, Justin Hilliard, the senior captain, gets off of the block by 88, would be a block by 88, gets around him, third and short, makes the play. Out of Cincinnati St. Xavier, what a good job of playing out in space, getting off of that block, and then getting back down underneath and making a perfect form tackle against ETN. And Kerry Combs, the defensive coordinator, fired up tonight, fourth down for the Clemson as we start the fourth quarter. Fourth quarter coming up. College football playoff semifinal at the All-State Sugar Bowl inside the Superdome with just 3,000 lucky souls to witness this stunning performance by Ohio State up by three touchdowns. Justin Fields trouble even getting on the exercise bike with that grimacing. You can see he's got some extra padding there on the left side, the torso and the hip area. Meantime, it's fourth down to begin the fourth quarter. And another misfire by that Clemson offensive line. Suddenly it's fourth and six. Does that change the decision offense. now for Davo Sweeney? 65, oh. five-yard penalty. Still fourth down. Oh, my uh, goodness. It was Matt Bockhorst that were going to go for it in fourth and short. And now looks like the punt team is heading out there. 
Yeah, just anxious on a fourth down play. He's a veteran, a junior out of Cincinnati. Just jumps, jumps the gun there on, on fourth and short, trying to get a head start, trying to be able to get maybe on that reach block and just jump the gun. Bockhorst and Carmen, both Ohio natives, you know, extra pumped up tonight. And you're right, a little too anxious. So now, instead of a gamble deep in their territory, it's just the safe play, the punt by Spires. And the fair catch made by Wilson. Maria. Well, Chris, you mentioned Justin Fields trying to get on the exercise bike. Really, he hasn't sat down much since taking that hit. He's trying to stay warm as much as possible. The one time that he stopped was to check in with his offensive line. He hit everyone's hand and said 15 more minutes. Give it all that you've got. But he's staying up, trying to stay warm, has a lot of padding on that right hip and trying to really gut out this last quarter. He's been gutting it out. And he has not had a plate of beignets at halftime, Desmond Howard style. That is the padding you see under that jersey that was not there at the beginning of the game. But no way I, he's coming. I missed just I, one play after that big hit, by the way. I, I just keep going back to the, the entire team's determination and, and focus on, uh, you know, people talking about him this year. They didn't deserve it. The, the way they lost last year, there's no way he's coming out. Sermon breaks free, gets the corner and scoots out of bounds. Yeah, the hype video ended with the rewrite the ending that was the whole theme after last year yeah. how, how about that little shake right there on Charleston that play again designed to go to the left but you better be ready to defend the entire field with Trey Sermon he's got tremendous vision and quickness and he's able to cut back if the front side's taken away you, whoever has the back door better make sure that they're solid there because he'll shake you and then he has the acceleration to get upfield and get a lot of yards so rewrite the ending means close. They got 14 minutes to protect this lead. Looking to add to it. Fields down the field. Caught for a touchdown. Jamison Williams make it five touchdowns for Fields tonight. And the Buckeyes can smell it. A 45-yard strike. And Fields is delivering a performance that's going to live forever in Ohio State history. This is truly really special tonight. See Nolan Turner, both safeties. I talked about Venables needing to roll the dice a bit and being aggressive. It means leaving those corners on islands. This time it's Sheridan Jones against the fastest receiver on the Ohio State roster, Jamison Williams. Both safeties at about six to eight yards up tight, anticipating run that Ohio State's going to keep killing clock by running the ball. And instead, they see the one-on-one -on -one matchup and they take advantage of it downfield in Williams. Justin Fields had more than enough fuel. Total determination tonight, 22 of 26, 385, six touchdowns. Ohio State in charge, up by 28. Again, I, I talked about how Brent Venables down late like this is going to have to leave his corners on island. Safety's up early down. You're expecting run. And instead, Ryan Day shows you how determined his team is and how much confidence he has in Justin Fields. Jamison Williams matched up one on one with Sheridan Jones. No safeties back to help. And they hit another big one for a touchdown. We thought it might be the Buckeyes secondary that was vulnerable tonight. Instead, it's the Tigers who have been riddled for 385 passing yards by Fields. All those Clemson DBs have been toasted from time to time. Next week in the NFL Super Wild Card Weekend, you got triple headers both days, mega cast coverage all over the place on ESPN and ABC. Don't know the matchups yet, and that'll be determined after this weekend's games. Down by four scores, 14 minutes to play. For Trevor Lawrence to avoid his second ever career loss as a starting quarterback. The other, of course, here against LSU to end last season's quest. High throw, and Rodgers has had a very quiet night, draws a lot of attention. Flag comes in on the tackle. Werner and Borland combined to stop him. Not many flags tonight, just two penalties on no. Ohio State, three on Clemson.
personal foul, face mask, grabbing the helmet opening. Defense, number 20, 15 yard penalty and an automatic first down. So Werner, Bruce, I know, guilty. I know Fields and the Ohio State offense getting a lot of the attention tonight, but I, I think it needs to be said that Kerry Coombs and the Ohio State defense collectively playing with a chip on their shoulder. They are, they are playing with physicality. They're playing with speed. They're playing with an attitude tonight against a very gifted quarterback and a lot of speed that we all wondered how they would do defending that speed. Well, this defense was doubted when Indiana threw for almost 500 yards and five touchdowns and almost came from 28 down to win the game. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I, I mean, 35 to seven. I think Kerry Coombs and, and Ryan Day would tell you finish the game. And Indiana's a good team. That, you know, when they had Michael Penix, and they're they're throwing it around against most teams they played. As you learn, Northwestern is a pretty good team. And you know, I think sometimes you look at some of the opponents, and nationally they don't maybe get the same kind of recognition. Boy, four man rush. They pressure Lawrence and force him to check it down to Lynn J. Dixon, who's tackled right near the marker by Hilliard. You should spot him just short. I, I just think sometimes you watch a game and you can see it's not one player, it's not two or three players, it's it's pretty much every player. Uh, it, they bought into the disrespect, they bought into the revenge factor, and, and games aren't played on emotion, but they are played when you defensively when you have a controlled rage for 60 minutes, and, and that's how they played tonight on this side of the ball. Well put. Controlled rage. Not the mental mistakes that plagued them a year ago. Penalties were huge in that loss. Lawrence keeps it. And man, he has to fight. He's right near the marker. Togi, I met him again. It's going to be real close. Togi, I just finds a way to get off of blocks. I mean, he, he on that play, he was twisting and spinning. Watch him right in the middle. Spin, get off of it. Where is he? Hit him. I mean... 72 and 92 in the middle can play football. They, what, what comes call him the human tree? Just because he's, like, he's <laughs> thick like a trunk. But he plays hard every snap. When you do yeah. that, you yeah. earn the respect of your teammates. And he has become a vocal leader. Lawrence to Powell, who scampers out of bounds. A 11 yard gain, another first down at the 35. Ohio State with this big lead, obviously. They don't, they don't want to give up any explosives, any quick scores, trying to make. Trevor Lawrence and this offense have to work for everything, playing a little softer in their zone, playing every, keeping everything in front of them. And they don't give up a chunk play. Ohio State's been really, really difficult to score on this year. Lawrence flips it over the head. In fact, nobody's been able to march down the field and score a touchdown unless they've had at least one play of 20 plus yards. Cooper pressured Lawrence that time. They did a nice job, actually. I'm talking about softer coverage. That time, Sean Wade, I looked at as the ball was being snapped. He's up tight right in the face of Cornell Powell, kind of jamming him and, and challenging him off the ball. There he is again down at the bottom, this time against Frank Ladson. Conversation with, Trevor, uh, with uh, Davis winning on the sidelines here. The yard markers are correct. Unless she would change, but it is second and ten. Clemson must score and score very quickly, or the math just didn't add up. Get enough possessions in the final 12 minutes to catch up. Well, guys, bring some pressure. Lawrence throws up his back foot. And it's dropped. Wow. Stepping in there was Josh Proctor. Had a chance at a pick six against Northwestern. Warner it, it, brought it, the heat that time. Yeah, Pete Warner brings the pressure. He goes right through Travis Etienne. Right there, does a good job. He doesn't slow down. He gets into the face of Trevor Lawrence. And that's why that ball floated that way. And boy, Proctor, as you said, Chris, he had one in Indy. And this time he drops another one. He could have sealed it. As it is third and ten. And the tough night continues for Travis Etienne. Hasn't done a lot running or receiving and didn't pick up that blitz. Lawrence again under pressure tried to get the ball on the edge to Powell. Flag comes in. It was Wade in coverage. And it'll be pass interference on Wade.
Don't know if he needed to because that was going to be tough for Powell Pass to make the refers. catch. Defense, number 24, 15 yard penalty and an automatic first down. The throw was outside. Yeah, let, 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 let's watch this because this is becoming a, a, a good match. He's fine there, he's fine there. And then he kind of pushes him into the sideline. I think that's the ball, but the ball was a catchable. Ball's over his head. Yeah, it wasn't that far. He actually yeah, got, he got a hand no, on it. Yeah, he got, got a hand on it there. Lawrence pressure and set. Ball comes out. Clemson falls on it. Cooper got there again. The fumble recovery made by Putnam. Tigers avoid a turnover, but Lawrence is beginning to take a beating. Yeah, C Cooper is a physical defensive end. Watch him right in front of you, work around McFadden. Relentless, a relentless approach there is why he was able to jar that ball loose, and Clemson fortunate to get back on it. It's the first you know, sack for the Buckeyes tonight, Kirk. C Cooper's not known to be twitchy off the edge, but that time he showed that. Going up going right by Jordan McFadden. They don't have a Chase Young. He was a generational pass rusher. It's a community effort by Ohio State. And they influenced Lawrence a lot tonight, even though that was their first official sack. Now Trevor tries to find Powell against Wade again. No chance that time. Third and 16 coming up. Well, that play didn't have much of a chance. It continues to be a one-on-one -on -one battle with Powell into the boundary there against Sean Wade. I think Trevor just predetermined he wanted to try to get the ball to his best vertical threat. Clemson sort of running out of answers here on offense. Haven't got ETN going. Amari Rogers has been bottled up by this Buckeye defense. And Lawrence under pressure again, delivers a strike. Powell breaks free. Powell knifing down and scoring. So they convert third and 16 into a touchdown to keep some hope alive here. 26 he, yard strike. He had to get rid of that ball before Tyreek Smith hit him. And I'll tell you, it was a great route by Cornell Powell. Off to your right, watch him work against Sean Wade. He turns him right there. And then he throws the ball before his head's even turned to a spot, hoping he would eventually turn off of his route. Look at this move right there. Does a nice job. He turns him twice, gets him in soft coverage, and then he's able to make a play after the catch for the touchdown. Absolutely crucial that Clemson get out of that third and 16 and get seven points. So 10.42 to play, the lead at 21, and the Tigers' defense get a stop. You're watching the All-State Sugar Bowl on ESPN. The All-State Sugar Bowl, brought to you by All-State. You've never been in better hands. Capital One, what's in your wallet? And Bolt 24, real advanced hydration from the makers of Gatorade. Want to stay up to date? Just tell Siri, show me upcoming bowl games. And doubleheader tomorrow night. Kirk, what do you make of the PlayStation Fiesta Bowl, the Ducks and the Cyclones, and then the Aggies and the Tar Heels? Capital I Bowl. love both those games, actually. I'm looking forward to Oregon after winning the Pac-12, uh, have a chance to go up against Matt, uh, against uh, Brock Purdy in that offense. And Reese Hall, they have such great balance, so that'll be a physical game. And then you know, the a and you, you talked earlier about A&M sh sh should show up in that bowl game with a chip on their shoulder. North Carolina has a lot of guys not playing in that game, but uh, I, I love both those matchups. Fair caught by DeMario McCall. It's kind of hard to make the case that Ohio State didn't belong in the bracket after what we've seen here in New Orleans tonight. Josh Fields with a smile. Not feeling any pain for the moment. Just got to finish the job here. 10.42 to go. Does Ryan Day, Kirk, continue to be aggressive, keep the throttle on up three scores? Yeah. I, I think you're going to see a similar approach. I think it's a mixed a mixed uh, bag as far as tempo is concerned. Of course, he's going to be conscious of the clock and, and trying to work that maybe a little bit more now that they're into the fourth quarter. But he came in with a mindset, and he wanted his team to have a mindset of, of playing with an attitude and playing with a chip on their shoulder. And so let, let's see how he plays this up by 21. Well, handling the ball off to Trey Sermon has been a sound choice most of the night, and he picks up six yards. Seen Justin Fields with some deep strikes tonight. He's been accurate short. 
16 of 17, but six for Look nine on passes that travel beyond 20 yards. Six of nine, 222, and three touchdowns, as you say. That, that's, that's, people want to know about his accuracy downfield. That, that, that's incredible. And his receivers have made some good plays on balls, but he has uh, won the night, 16 of 17 on those shorter throws. Decent and here they are working that clock. Sack twice. When, when he's not pressured this year, he's been an 80% passer. Pressure that time and misfires Luke Farrell. That, that's, that's the best since Russell Wilson in, in FBS about a decade ago when not pressured. Yeah, you know, when, when we watch him tonight, it makes you wonder one of two things. How much did he miss Chris Olave in the Big Ten Championship or how good is Northwestern's defense with Pat Fitzgerald and the job they did against him where he he never was really in rhythm. He's 12 of 27 against the Cats in that Big Ten Championship. Game. The answers are he missed them a lot and they are pretty good. And they are really good. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> They'll need four to keep this drive going on third down. Play clock is winding down. There's some confusion. And yeah, Ryan Day figures this is a good time to spend one of those three timeouts. This is an important play to try to keep the drive going and the clock churning. So they'll talk about it of the third down play when you come back to New Orleans. World coverage brought to you by Goodyear. Keep driving from the first kickoff to the final whistle. Goodyear more driven. New Orleans eerily quiet. Saw a few Ohio State and Clemson fans kind of wandering the streets today, but so different in this COVID era from the typical festivities of the Sugar Bowl. No diminished intensity on the field with only 3,000 fans looking on. This has been another slugfest between these two heavyweight programs. Ohio State facing a third and four. Fields from the pocket against the four-man rush. Lofts it into traffic. And going up to trying to make a catch was Sermon. He was double covered. So a risky throw by the quarterback on third yeah. and four. Here comes the punt. He he actually had Smith and Jigba underneath to the right. Look, he goes over top and look look to the bottom. Look underneath right there. If he throws that, he, he just didn't see it. One of those rare mistakes, one of those rare reads he didn't make. He kind of locked in on Trey Sermon there. Had he completed it, though, that's a first down, and they can continue yeah. to chew on the clock. Now Lawrence gets the football back. Three scores down, just under 10 minutes remaining. Punt safely away by Chrisman. It's a short one, and this one checks up and takes a Clemson bounce. Finally touched at the 39. Well, the Crimson Tide await Monday, January 11th. National Championship game, Hard Rock Stadium in Miami. 8 o'clock Eastern time on ESPN is the kickoff. And the megacast coverage on multiple platforms. The Bear Kirk chiming in that the Tide have been Listed an early seven-point favorite. Is that against whomever comes out of this one? Or is it is the <laughs> yeah, assumption that it's Ohio State? <laughs> you but know, Buckeyes don't care, man. Kirk. They'll, they'll, they'll take being a touchdown underdog. If you look at the history of this program, as you well know, when they're doubted, when they're countered out, when they're not expected to win, this goes back a long time. They are very, very dangerous. It goes back to before Urban Meyer and certainly under his tenure, and it's continued under Ryan Day. Ohio State very rarely Personal gets a foul. chance to feel Legal as an underdog. Block. Kicking team, number 20, 15-yard penalty added to the end of the play. Let me, let me, I'll, just, I'll finish that thought in a second. Pete Warner ends up uh, hitting Kendrick in the back, and the ref right there, right in front of it. Oh, wow, that's, uh, that's a bit of a delicate block. Yeah. yeah I, I mean, my goodness, I, they're calling that a blindside block? I he bumped so. into him. Yeah. But my point is, getting back to your, your thought, Ohio State's always dealing with trying to, to avoid complacency. They're typically being told how great they are, especially in conference play in the regular season. And so when they do get the world against them, this is kind of the Ohio State team you're going to take on, a, a team that's going to play with, with an edge. And the fact that they're playing this Clemson team after the way last year's game went, uh, you knew that they'd show up. Was it going to be good enough was going to be the question, but you knew they'd show up with this edge and this attitude. Lawrence to Etienne on the screen, gets a couple blocks. Travis Etienne, ooh, almost broke it. Lawrence, though, is a dangerous guy in this, in this situation and trying to prolong his Clemson career before we would presume with all the world head to the NFL draft. And 
They quickly moved the ball with the aid of that penalty to the Ohio State 35. Buckeyes rush only three, but they get home. And Large is knocked down, lost the ball. Jonathan Cooper got there along with Tyreek Smith. They retained possession as Karma was there. Lawrence is still well, they, down on the field. They showed pressure. They ended up only bringing the three. But Cooper, who's really starting to have a half at the bottom zero, gets around the guard. Putnam, who's trying to pull to pick him up, he gets to him. And then Tyreek Smith finishes it off with the ball comes loose. Carmen, the left tackle, is able to pounce on it. But how about Cooper? Jonathan Cooper, known as a physical defensive end, has been getting upfield and, and getting into the backfield and affecting Trevor Lawrence in obvious passing situations. Man, Kirk, you don't see Lawrence put the ball on the ground. Lost one fumble, a couple other fumbles by him have been recovered by Clemson. Now a dart across the middle. It's Powell and makes a catch to the 32 before Banks stops him. It'll be third down. You know, without Tony Elliott and, and, and helping being down like this, you have Brandon Streeter who's doing a good job. It helps to have Trevor Lawrence as a three-year starting quarterback where you're down by 21, you need to move fast. It helps to, to have him out there to get you right and make sure you're in the right play call. Ches Malusi doesn't have a touch tonight and is now in the backfield. Buckeyes are showing some pressure, but they back out. Four-man rush. Lawrence has the ball batted down. Haskell Garrett has made a big impact tonight. You know, sometimes it's not just about getting the edge pressure. Haskell Garrett is lined up over 54. Watch him over Trotter. Watch him just work into that backfield, pushing Carmen into the backfield, and eventually gets close enough to Lawrence where he can get up and use that left arm to knock the ball down. That is pure power, pushing initially the guard, and then working on Carmen, the left tackle. Garrett it is and Togia have had their way against this interior of the offensive line of Clemson that ran right through Notre Dame in the last game. Again, Lawrence pressured, flings the ball to the turf. Dangerous throw, Tyreek Smith got there in a hurry, and Ohio State makes a stand, and the Buckeyes can feel it now. Boy, Baron Browning gets around the edge, forcing Lawrence up, but it's the inside moves by this defense. This time it's Tyreek Smith working over the left guard, Ohio State. Knows Lawrence is throwing, getting after the quarterback, not giving him any chance at all to set up to throw the ball. Ohio State takes over, 7.43 to play, up 21. You know, Browning is an outside linebacker. This time they walk him up, play in rushing situations as an edge guy. But look at Levin, Tyreek Smith, usually is an edge guy. Obvious passing situations, they move him in against the guard, this time Mason Trotter, and that spin move was electric. And they could not deal with that speed up front of the Clemson O-line. They feed Sermon. His 27th carry tonight, and he just powers forward for nine more. Here's Lawrence after that desperation heave on fourth down. And Will Sweeney using the play chart to kind of shield his head as he has words for his quarterback who, barring a miracle for them, is going to lose for just the second time in his career. Yeah. That's just more of a thank you for everything you've done kind of thing. Communication there between Dabo and, and his quarterback. No urgency now for the Ohio State offense that has mixed tempo so beautifully. Get the Tigers on their heels using all of the play clock on this second and one play. And Sermon moves the six, spun down to the 47. The flag is out. Turner on the tackle. You wonder if not having Nolan Turner in there in the first half, if they'll speak of that in the postgame analysis. Offense, number 78, 10 yard penalty, still second down. Betty Frere, the fine freshman tackle. Trevor Lawrence comes out and wins the national championship as the MVP in his freshman season. Tearing up Alabama. Last year, of course, they fall a game short in this building. Joe Burrow lit up the defense and lit up a stogie. 34 wins as a starting quarterback, 34 and one coming in, but back here in the Superdome, determined to use that loss here as fuel 
Looks like the Tigers are going to take a step back and fall at the semifinal stage. And Lawrence, the presumed number one overall pick, he hasn't officially said that's what he's doing, but it would be a, a big shock. Kirk, I think you'd agree if he yeah. pulled an ETN and came back for another year. Nah, he, he'll be done, I mean, but he's had a brilliant career, and it's really, to me, there's certain guys that come through and they play for three years, and they deal with the pressure every week of trying to win every game, and it's how they carry themselves. I think Trevor Lawrence's legacy is not just winning, but I think it's how he played the game under such uh, scrutiny, such pressure. You know, Deshaun Watson uh, dealt with that when he was a quarterback at Clemson and did an amazing job. And there's Trevor's parents looking on, obviously frustrated with the result, but proud of their son and everything that he's accomplished at Clemson and, and, and about his future. And accomplished off the field as well. He got engaged yeah. this summer to Marissa, his fiance, and used his influential, powerful voice to speak out against racial injustice used his big platform to lobby and get the season kind of moving forward when it seemed to be in doubt. Lawrence, one of the most influential voices in the sport in terms of the players, has left a very large imprint on the sport, not just with his on-field accomplishments. He yeah. used his influence to help raise money for families who were in need because of COVID. Yep. And of course, one of the symbols of this season, of course, tested positive and because of the protocol, missed those two games mid-season. What a story Trey Sermon has been. Monster game, breaking records in Indianapolis, breaking tackles and gaining yards in flurries here. Charleston finally tackled him. He's heading towards 200 tonight. Well, they just keep going to this split zone, and it keeps working. Right side does a nice job of opening things up here. How about Paris Johnson? He's moved over from left guard over to right guard. In for Wyatt Davis does a nice job of sustaining a block, but Trey Sermon with that stiff arm. That stiff arm starting to become legendary. Let's check the flag here as they huddle up. Personal foul, face mask, offense, number eight. 15-yard oh, penalty from the spot At of the, the foul. end of it. Still, third down. They called a face I, mask on this. Stiff arm? Watch his stiff arm, and I think at the end, uh, uh, Charleston gets locked up with him. Let's see, I, I think as it continues here, right, maybe he, if he grabs the face mask. Yeah, you can't grab it. Uh, you obviously can't grab it. You, you're giving yeah. great yeah, license as a runner. You, you could put your hand on an opponent's helmet. That's totally legal, can't, but if you, you grab you the mask and twist, yeah, right. you can't. Here I am bragging on the stiff arm, and he's grabbing a hold of the face mask. Yeah, you couldn't see everything from Nashville. Done a great job tonight. <laughs> We're trying, man. Looking forward to Miami. Oh, yeah. Standing next to you. I'm going to look forward to that as well. And it'll be a lot of buildup, a lot of talk. If Ohio State holds this lead, of course, the rematch of the game that was here in the Superdome when Zeke Elliott and the Buckeyes stunned the Crimson Tide, went on to win the inaugural playoff era national championship against Oregon. That was their last CFP win until tonight. Sermon wrapped up by Brissi and stopped behind the line at the 30. And it's fourth down. You talked about me being in Nashville. I just want to, to, to uh, say thank you to the folks who gave me a chance tonight. I mean, it, you wouldn't believe the setup I have here, but Carl Heineman, Brian uh, Ristine, Kevin Cleary, Katie Abbott, Adam Whitlock, a bunch of other people to, to give me a chance. Uh, Eddie Placey, a lot of people that worked really hard literally for three days to put all this together to give me a chance to be able to at least see this game and, and, and be able to join you, Chris. Uh, I was heartbroken when I learned that I had tested positive, you know, not about my health, but about missing this game. So I was, I was glad I'm okay, number one, but also number two, I was able to join you and be a part of this broadcast. Now you're the best in the business. I knew you'd do just fine from there as badly as you wanted to be here. So flag before the punt thing is getting a little ragged snap false start offense number 47 five yard penalty still fourth down the clock on the snap Hilliard has not made many mistakes tonight had a monster game against Northwestern interception fumble recovery in that Big Ten championship game he's continued tonight graduate captain masters in consumer sciences one of 21 graduates on the Ohio State team. Tigers have 23 graduates. We salute all of them. Go, 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 but a tough year to be a student and a football player. Everything done virtually on screen. No contact. 
Yet another flag. We ever going to get this thing punted? Back him up five more. False start. Offense, number six, five-yard penalty. Still fourth down. So I shot up Nolan Turner there, one of the veterans. You know, because this year doesn't count against the eligibility, guys who were seniors who would, would have used it up in a normal circumstance do have the option to come back. Turner would be one of those guys. Guy who wants to be a coach someday. They want to prolong his playing career. And Rodgers backpedals. We talked about the game here in the Superdome. It was the semifinal back in year one of the playoff here. A little trickery. Evan Spencer with a great throw. But you remember this game for Zeke Elliott. Just yeah. going nuts, turning upfield. And Myers' team able to win it by a touchdown. Hard fought game as the number four seed. And went on to beat Mariota and the Ducks for the championship. But Clemson has been the problem. They've been the obstacle. Ohio State has faced no other opponent where they've lost as many as four times without a single win head to head. Trying to erase that tonight. It's Dixon in the backfield. Throw on the edge and the catch made by Williams who's forced out of bounds near the marker at the 37. You know you, you would think with the buildup of that game you know it, it, it's it's going to be very similar to what Ohio State felt in the buildup to this game. They're, they're going to hear how they don't have a chance against Alabama and they'll rally around that. I mean that, that will be the talk even after this performance and that'll be something that Ryan Dave will be very appreciative of. No, it'll be but a I think lot you'll of talk. See a, you know, it'll, it'll be their eighth game of the season playing in a championship against an Alabama team that would be playing their 13th game. Yeah, I, I think that's really overrated. You know, personally, I, I think you could spin that either negatively or positively. Sure. I think Ohio State will tell you that it's a negative because they 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 haven't been able to build uh, any kind of rhythm until tonight, any kind of continuity or depth. Not playing more games. Lawrence I'd rather play more games than less. Pressured Rodgers, who's just been limited, held in check by this Buckeye defense. The most dangerous receiver all season for Clemson has not really been able to make an impact. Warner with the tackle there. Well, the reason why they were doubted, there were so many skeptics, so they haven't looked anything like this throughout the season. I think you'd agree. Yep. By light years, it's their best performance. Low throw, incomplete. Against the Big Ten schedule, it was a very depleted conference. Let's be honest, it was a down year for the Big Ten. Ohio State you know, won the championship. They changed the rules to get him there with their sixth game. And I think you see why Barry Alvarez and others made the push. It's clearly one of the better teams around. And even Dabo Sweeney acknowledged it, although he ranked him behind Coastal Carolina and nine other teams in his poll. And Buckeye fans will ask him to eat those words after this one. Third down, low throw, catch made. It's a first down for Rodgers at the 40. Sweeney saying nothing personal. Ian Day have a, a nice relationship. He said it didn't matter whether it was Ohio State or any team that had played just six games. He thought that was not or worthy of consideration. Anything. Yeah, principle. Yep. But tell that to Ohio State. <laughs> right, right. No, I think Ryan Day appreciated it. You know, and, and I think he, he used that. But I think it was really more about, I mean, when you go through an entire winter conditioning, you go through a global pandemic, and your focus is on getting back to the field because of what happened the last time you were on the field and the way you lost the game. I, I don't think him ranking him 11 had as much to do with it as the game last year. That was the focus. That was what these players wanted a chance to get back at. When you're lifting weights at 6 o'clock in the morning and the score is up, Clemson 29, Ohio State 23, and it's January and February, that, that, that's all the incentive you need. Galloway with the big catch. Sets up the Tigers at the 12. And Lawrence for the end zone. Over the head of E.J. Williams. Olave. Welcome back into the fold tonight. Six catches, two touchdowns. And a performance by his quarterback, Justin Fields, that will be talked about forever in Ohio State lore. Even more so if they can finish the job and beat the Crimson Tide. But whatever happens in Miami, Tonight 
in New Orleans the way fields played in pain with such great determination and toughness seen few things like it in all the years I've watched this sport frankly Kirk yeah 385 I, and six touchdowns Brent Venables has his defense around him I, I agree with you Chris I was in fact thinking about that when I watched him limping off the field I've been following Ohio State football really since the mid 70s and I'm trying to think of any kind of individual performance where a guy had to gut through a, a performance and, and put up six touchdown passes I, I really can't think of one you're right this will be remembered not just for the the execution but for the way he was able to fight through pain Morris almost lost the ball again and is dragged down by Browning at the sideline it's been a difficult night for Trevor clearly far from the way he wanted to cap his Clemson career Chris I'll, I'll tell you man that, uh, Nick Saban's sitting watching this game he's looking at an Ohio State defensive line that, that looks pretty salty Pretty athletic, pretty physical. You know, he, he's probably already starting to do his homework <laughs> and looking at Ohio State. I'm telling you, if you know Coach Saban, he probably is. But this defensive line has sent a message. And they are uh, they are not just a big, strong, physical group from the Big Ten. They've got some twitch on that field, and they've been putting a lot of pressure on, on uh, Trevor. Fourth down here, final flicker of hope for Lawrence and the Tigers. Throws off the back foot to the end zone, and it's intercepted on the carom. It's seven banks. And Banks just weaves his way down the sidelines, still running, and ducks down and let the celebration officially begin on the Ohio State sideline. The Scarlet and Gray Faithful here in the dome, and all throughout the Buckeye Nation and their fans around the world. This is a sweet one and a night to remember for Ohio State. Redemption, revenge, whatever you want to call it, a complete performance by this team. No doubt about it. Ball actually gets through and, and gets into the hands, I think, of Cornell Powell. But it was 12, the freshman, Ransom, that knocks that ball loose. It's Amari Rogers. He knocks that ball loose. Williamson helps out. He actually dislodges it. And there's Banks with his eyes up, sees the ball, and, and comes up with the interception. But a good job by both Williamson and, and Ransom both. And again, it's Lawrence just trying to make a desperation play on fourth down again, though, Kirk. He was throwing off his back foot. Harassed and hit a lot tonight. Three fumbles, lost one of them. That was his first interception. And Ohio State just a few snaps away from the ultimate game. They've beaten one of the top franchises in the sport tonight. They will face the other dueling dynasty in the mighty Crimson Tide in Miami. And they'll be underdogs again, and they won't mind that one bit as they get the bucket ready for Ryan Day. The previous play is under further review. The ruling on the field was an interception. Okay. So they feel the need to stop things and take a look at that. I guess the the only thing in question, Bill, was would they have ruled it possession in the end zone before the ball was batted away? What, what would be this? The that, that could be the only thing they're looking at. But from the views that we have here, he's got control. He's in the air. So he has not possessed the ball yet. Now is he starting to come down? Yeah, he has a foot down, but the ball gets knocked out. He hasn't had it long enough. This is a loose ball. It's an interception. It should be Ohio State's ball. You talked about ransom there. Here comes Williamson to knock the ball loose. I mean, it's just a convergence of defenders. And then it goes off the helmet of ransom into the hands of Banks. I don't see any way they can call this a completed pass, can they? Did they, they view it right there? He's got to survive that hit. He's got to survive the ground. And he's so what are we looking at? What are you looking at, Bill? I mean, it. I, He's I got it like you, not you but what are the what are the boys looking at here well they're looking to see as he got firm control as he finished the process of the catch because if you do that in the end zone you'd have a touchdown right. but but the, it, the it, standard it, is different in the end zone isn't it though a catch is a catch but it becomes dead when you have a catch in the end zone so Bill because we visited that last year in the end zone what would finish a complete a complete uh, completion or completed the uh, process of the catch. Well, one timing wise, he doesn't have it very long. Uh, the second part to this is, as he's going, uh, as he's getting the foot down, controlling the ball, uh, he's being hit, so he needs to survive those hits. 
there was a, a scrum hands helmet football all of it converging as Rodgers tried to come down with it after further review the William on, on the field of an interception stands first down Ohio State and make it official and Ohio State a couple snaps away from one of their sweetest victories the job Ryan Day has done as a, a leader of this program and taking over for Urban Meyer last year in his first year getting him all the way to the, the playoff and this year navigating through that that pandemic the season canceled and they play again been incredible uh, what he's been able to do is as, as uh, the head coach and of course he's happy with the way his quarterback and the way his team has played we talked about the motivation showing up in winter conditioning using the loss last year to Clemson to get them ready and his quarterback took, took it personally tremendous toughness took the hit by James Kalski which caused him to be ejected from the game for targeting working through his progression showing the arm strength and the accuracy downfield hitting a lave again another really accurate throw to the big tight end Rucker for a touchdown and then saw it earlier here's another one the arm strength the accuracy downfield touchdown for fields victory formation for the Buckeyes Pure muscle up front. They dominated the game in the trenches. The second quarter was decisive. The score was even in the first, third, and fourth, but that 21 zip edge for Ohio State when their defense clamped down on Lawrence. And they scored three touchdowns. That is the difference tonight. First time they beat the Tigers in the five meetings. Very few Ohio State fans able to witness this. Get about half of the 3,000 tickets. Everyone here tonight on their side will savor this memory forever, as will the players. Tigers are not used to losing games like this. And it's a disappointing end to a tremendous career for these seniors and the junior quarterback, Trevor Lawrence, finishing with a 400-yard game, but finishing with a loss. Sermon, another monster performance. Skalski disappointed for the second time in a postseason playoff game in two years, ejected for targeting. Scott Van Pelt coming along Sports Center. We'll have plenty of postgame coverage from both of the semifinals. And of course, we'll look ahead to Alabama and Ohio State. Dabo, some nice words for Justin Fields. Of course, committed to Penn State, went to Georgia, transferred to Ohio State to put himself in a position. Skalski. Skalski after that big the big hit. hit. Yeah. yeah, talking to him there. No hard feelings. Crowd, you hear the crowd yelling, Dabo. And he's being serenaded by the Buckeye crowd. And let's hear from Ryan Day with Maria. Well, Coach, your team never shied away from the rematch conversation from having the score in the locker room, having it in the weight room. And they came out very motivated today. What would you say that they put on display tonight in the Sugar Bowl? Uh, everything we've been through this year, to come out and play the way we played, I don't know what to say about this group. It's been an emotional season, and, and to win and come back and have a chance to play Clemson and then win the way we did, uh, unbelievable. So many guys played so well tonight. The quarterback was gutsy. The defense played really, really good. The offensive line played hard. There's a lot of guys who made unbelievable plays. It didn't sit well in our mouth, I gotta be honest with you, when we lost that game. So to come out and win the way we did, this is big. There was a lot of rhetoric too about you guys even belonging in this moment and belonging in the conversation for a national championship. How would you describe how you answered that question here tonight? I mean, we're, 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 a, we're a great program. We have a lot of pride. Ohio State Buckeyes mean something. and. I don't know how many games we had to play to get here, but all we had to do was play and we had to win once. And that's really what mattered. And I thought our character showed through. You mentioned a character. You mentioned the gutsy play of a guy named Justin Fields. And even after taking a hit, he sets a Sugar Bowl record for passing touchdowns. Just describe the play that you had from your QB today. No, I can't. I mean, what he means to me, I, I can't put it into words. The amount of time we spend together, for him to come out and play the way he did, after so many people doubted him nationally, he takes a big hit. He looked me in the eyes like, there's no way we're losing this game. 
And lastly, Coach, you went from not knowing if you had a season for five weeks to being here in a playoff. Describe your emotions right uh, now. I can't. I can't. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to let them all out when I get in the locker room. But it's been a long season. We're not done yet, though. we still got another game to play. All right. I appreciate it. Congratulations, Thanks. Coach. Thanks. The most bizarre, unique season. Three games canceled. They didn't play back-to-back -back weeks really since early November. Last home game was the Indiana game. They played once in the last 27 days coming in here. They had more than 300 missed practices combined, Kirk, because of all the COVID issues and the lack of continuity. Consistency wasn't there all year, but a complete performance tonight. We'll talk more about it, but let's hear now from Justin Fields with Tom Rinaldi. Thank you very much, Chris. Justin, let's start with, let's start with something simple. How satisfying is tonight? I mean, tonight, uh, I really can't explain, the, you know, the feeling. Uh, I just want to give all, all my thanks to God. I mean, without him, uh, I'd be nothing. We'd be nothing. So, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm just, I'm just, you know, blessed, blessed. What kind of pain did you have to manage throughout this game after the hit in the second quarter? Yeah, Being honest, I mean, Justin. Yeah, that, that, hit, that hit really took a toll on me. I mean, my ribs were, were, were killing me pretty much all game, but uh, what, what pushed me through was the love for my brothers. I mean, I would do anything for these guys, so I'm, I'm just, just so proud of everyone. The, the fact, Justin, that you lost to this team a year ago, how did that fuel you in this performance tonight? You know, I, I think that loss kind of fueled our whole offseason. It, it really fueled our whole season, so, uh, you know, that loss really pushed us in the offseason even more, so we were just glad to get this opportunity back to, to be able to play these guys again, and, of course, Clemson's a great team. They, they played a hard fought game. A message to anyone who would suggest that this is the 11th ranked team in the country. I'm not even a comment about that. I'm just glad we won. Well done. Appreciate it. Congrats. It's also been well done by Tom Rinaldi. He is moving on to exciting opportunities with Fox. This is his last assignment with us. Kirk, I know you'd join me and everyone else in the ESPN family wishing Tom well and thanking him for the consistent excellence of his work and the humanity that he's brought to every single story that he's covered for this network. We have more of our post game coverage. And we'll look ahead, of course, to the championship game, Alabama and Ohio State, January the 11th in Miami. Ohio State 49 28 here in New Orleans to punch their ticket at a Scott Van Pelt.
Same to you, Scotty. This is the building where Michael Jordan announced himself as a star, of course. That big shot as a freshman. And the Superdome saluting Ohio State lit up in scarlet and gray. Nice touch. And so the matchup is made. Alabama fully expected to be here. Ohio State winning as an underdog. Of course, the last meeting was right here. We showed you the highlights of that playoff win six years ago. They played three of the four times here. And Alabama, the overall edge. We'll talk more about that matchup. But now, down to the trophy ceremony, our buddy Reese Davis. Chris, thank you. What a tremendous football game tonight and a tremendous performance by Ohio State. We also want to congratulate Clemson on an outstanding season and a tremendous run to make it to the college football playoff. We'd also like to thank Allstate for its continued support of college football. And now to present the Sugar Bowl Trophy. The All-State Sugar Bowl Trophy is the president of the Sugar Bowl, Mr. Ralph Capitelli. Ralph. Thank you. On behalf of the All-State Sugar Bowl and the college football playoff, congratulations to both of these outstanding teams, not just for their great effort tonight, but for throughout the season. And now, on behalf of the college football playoff semifinal at the All-State Sugar Bowl, I am pleased to present the All-State Sugar Bowl Trophy to Coach Ryan Day and the Buckeyes of Ohio State. Hey, Ryan, that thing is really heavy. Hey, that thing is heavy, Ryan. If we can get it. <laughs> it's going to take Justin Fields and Tough Borland to help him out. A celebration in scarlet and gray. Ryan, if I can get you to a microphone. As we sit in the scarlet and gray confetti, you told us this morning on College Game Day this team had not played its best game yet. How would you describe what they just did against Clemson out here tonight? Well, first off, you know, want to give respect to Clemson. They, they have a great team, and they're... They're a championship team, so to come out here and play the way we did against them was huge. But I think today what it did was it showed our character. It showed the character of this team. They've been through so much this year. I mean, the journey that we've been on to get to right here, we didn't know how many games we'd play, but we knew we had to play our best tonight, and I think we did. When you think back to the period of time when you weren't sure if this team was going to have this opportunity, and now here it is. You're going to the national championship game. What's the significance of that? Oh, it's just, again, however many games, so many people doubted us going into this game. And these guys stuck together. They wanted a chance to come back and play. And who would have imagined the journey would have come all the way to right here to play Clemson again in the same game? And to come back and play the way we did, now we got an opportunity to go win the whole thing and maybe write one of the best stories ever in college football history. And the last time that you took home the All-State Sugar Bowl trophy, Ohio State did win the national championship. Ryan, congratulations on the performance tonight. Thank you. Thank you. We had some great performances by Ryan Day's players as well. I think this is no big surprise. Let's start with the offensive MVP of the Sugar Bowl, Justin Fields. Justin, pick up your trophy there, Justin. It's close to you. That's it. That's the one. Justin, when you, when you look at the last play from the Clemson game last year and how that drove you, what impact did that have on your preparation and your performance tonight? Yeah, I mean... After that loss last year, I, I think it fueled our whole team in the offseason, workouts, throughout practice, you know, fall camp. So I'm just proud of my brothers and, and proud, proud we got the dub. How difficult was it for you to stay in the game, keep playing after that huge shot you took? Yeah, I took a big shot in the uh, first or second quarter. But um, what, what really kept me going was, was my brothers and the uh, love for them. I mean, I do, anything, they, I, I do anything for these guys, and I just love them. Just love them. You guys have talked about rewriting the ending. Six touchdown passes tonight, yeah. but yet still another chapter to be written. Yeah. How do you envision the last chapter, the final ending being rewritten? I don't know how it's going to end, but I do know one thing, that we're going to go out there and play our butts off, play our hardest. So, yeah. Justin, congratulations. Just a remarkable performance. Thank one you. of the best in Sugar Bowl history. One of the best in the storied history of Ohio State.
Now, look, the offense was spectacular, but so too was the defense and really limiting Clemson, harassing Trevor Lawrence. And the defensive MVP of the game is Tough Moreland. Tough, pick up your uh, trophy over here, too. We got, got hardware. Tough, what, what was the significance of holding Clemson, shutting them down in the running game, about two yards per carry tonight? Yeah, um, give Clemson all the credit. Um, they're a great team, great players. Um, they knew, we knew we were going to have our work cut out for us. Um, you know, credit our guys. Uh, defensive line to the back end, everyone played um, their butts off, and uh, it was a full team effort. We've talked about this a lot over the course of the season. How would you describe the journey, the path of not knowing if there was going to be a season to now headed to the national championship game. Yeah, um, ups and downs, a roller coaster of a year, so much adversity. Um, but, you know, these guys have always, you know, stayed with it. I'm just so, so proud to be a part of this team. I'm so blessed and um, I'm excited for the opportunity to keep compete for the national championship. What a remarkable performance it was. Tough Justin, Ryan, everybody associated with Ohio State. Congratulations on just a remarkable performance. We also want to thank everybody from Allstate. We want to thank people from the city of New Orleans, Mercedes-Benz Superdome, all of the organizers and volunteers it takes to put on an event like this. Thank all of you for supporting the college football playoff and the Allstate Sugar Bowl. Chris, we'll kick it back to you now. Now, Reese, thank you. The story of every team in this craziest of seasons involved adversity. Ohio State had its own particular kind and they answered the critics and the skeptics tonight in a resounding fashion. And the matchup is now made for Miami, Alabama, and Ohio State. And the Buckeyes have conquered one of the top franchises of the sport in emphatic fashion. And now the other massively successful franchise awaits. And that is a, <laughs> it's a green Gatorade upside the face of Ryan Day. He'll take it. By the way, the silver-haired senior citizen who was laying flat on the carpet here Making a snow angel in the confetti was Kerry Combs, the defensive coordinator. And as Reese said, you give a ton of credit to Fields, a performance for the ages, but the credit is shared with that Ohio State defense. And this is fitting. It took a team to raise that heavy trophy tonight, and it took everyone, all three phases tonight, to get the job done for the Buckeyes. Kirk, your perspective, watching from afar and doing a great job from Nashville tonight. Well, this is a, a team, again, that, that came in with an attitude. It's incredible in college football when you have a, a, an entire team that, that feels a sense of disrespect, a sense of frustration, and I think they used a game from last year's motivation to get ready. Olave had that last play. He talked about that this week with us. You could talk about uh, Justin Fields, the defense. Everybody had a reason to show up laser focused and to go out and play together as a group. And when you have that in college football, it's a great equalizer. And in tonight's case, it was a difference in the game. I thought Ohio State out executed Clemson in all phases and, and just played more physical and more athletic. And that second quarter is a difference in a game. It was 14-14 at the end of the first quarter. Ohio State scored 21 unanswered in that second quarter to build a 35-14 lead at the half. Yeah, and a city famous for the French Quarter. You're right, it's the second quarter that Ohio State fans will never forget here at 21-zip edge in that frame. And, you know, the mantra was, you don't believe in us, you don't think we belong, we'll show you. Doubt us, but we still got plenty of dudes. And they showed that tonight. Let's go to Scott Van Pelt back in the studio.